Before the true crime podcast, here is a word from our sponsor, Nutrafol. 80 million men and women in the US experience thinning hair. Not me. Yet it's still not openly talked about, which can make going through it feel scurry and stressful, which can thin your hair out even more if you're getting stressed out about losing it, which just adds to the problem. Nutrafol is formulated with potent botanicals to help you grow hair as strong as you are. And it's physician formulated to be 100% drug free. When you subscribe, you'll receive monthly deliveries. So you never miss a dose. Shipping is free and you can pause or cancel anytime. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and using promo code Sean, S-H-A-U-N, to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is the best offer available anywhere, and it's only available to US customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code Sean, S-H-A-U-N, for her as strong as you are. From stress to digestion, multiple things can impact your hair growth. The hair growth strategies are curated to your hair and body according to hair growth science. It is with great pleasure, because I've been watching his videos quite a lot, that we have Danny G on the podcast. Hello, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> he is a very animated character. We're going to go on a fun, hard-hitting journey today. His YouTube channel has just shot up to over 40,000 subscribers. Thanks, everyone. The link to his channel will be near the top of the description box. So if you like what you hear today, I urge you to join me as one of his subscribers. And we'll also have the link to his other social media in the description box as well. I'm just talking to him about writing a book as well, which I think he should do. So, Danny, before we get to your life story, then, huge thank you for coming on. And we like to grip people by just extracting a crazy story from your life and there was an occasion where you were in a pink nighty and you ended up fighting quite a lot of people yeah how did that come about <laughs> my son was down the shop yeah right doing whatever he was doing i found out after what he was doing that's why i calmed down right yeah so my son's down the shop he's come back to the house he's been kicked in by like 20 lads between 16 and 20 years of age right i ain't having that yeah so at the time, I've just grabbed whatever I can because I didn't want these lads getting out of there. I wanted them still there, yeah? So I put my Mrs. Pink dressing gown on and her pink slippers. I ran outside and my son's little five-year-old bike was there. So I grabbed the bike and I'm going down the road like this on the bike. All the lads from Smevik saw it. It was them lads who told me to mention this story. They went, Danny, it's meant... So I'm going down the road like this. He said, Danny, you just threw the bike. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ran into him. So I ran into him. I started fucking fighting that. The geezer from the chippy... I was running out and he's going, Danny, no, 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 no. I knew him, do you know what I mean? So I've gone, look, mate, fucking listen. I said, they're fucking, they've had my son, I'm going to smash him and that. He's gone, no, no, they're my nephews and that. Your son was in the shop being racist, right? Now, I ain't racist, yeah? So from that moment on, I was like, okay, no problem, mate. And the funny thing was, right, yeah, my son was at the bottom of the road watching. I've looked at him, he's just run. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And the chip shop skis has gone, Danny, you got free fish and chips for life, mate. I was like, sweet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's the craziest story. Didn't end in too much violence, but yeah, that's the craziest story. So, so, how did all this start, Danny? I mean, like, where were you born? I was born in Doncaster. Doncaster. So, whereabouts is that on the map? Uh, South Yorkshire. South Yorkshire. And then you ended up in, like, the Midlands? Yeah. Yeah. Mum and dad bought a pub down there. How did your mum and dad meet? Uh, well, my mum and dad met because my dad was a doorman in Doncaster for many, many years. Yeah. yeah. And obviously through my mum just going out and about and that, she heard about Charlie Gration and she wanted some of Charlie Gration, so she got Charlie Gration. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got this um, fighting DNA then from your dad, would you say? And granddad, yeah. And because granddad. it goes all the way back, to be honest. Yeah. The whole family, the whole family are a bit skits. In school, what were you like? Were you into the more physical stuff? Nah, you see, this is the thing with me, Sean. Yeah. All my brothers and my cousins and everything, they're all fucking rock solid. Yeah. yeah. When I was younger, I was the odd one out, bro. I was a lover, not a fighter, innit? So I really? wasn't like that. It took something to 
switch me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which was yeah. a lot of grief. Do you know what I'm saying? So to be honest, my school life was spent playing sports. I was just a sportsman. And I was, you know, chasing girls around like a normal lad. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. really involved in none of that crazy shit until crazy shit started happening. And, and academically, then, were you interested in any of the other subjects, or was it mostly sports? Uh, every subject. Every subject. Yeah, I've always been a, yeah. a sponge for knowledge. Let's say really? That. I love knowledge. I yeah. love it. Do you know what I mean? It's the greatest thing that anybody ever gave me was the knowledge to read after them and find out what they've experienced, what they think. Do you know what I mean? Because... Knowledge is power, mate. People Definitely. don't realise this. Definitely. They don't realise this. That's why certain books are banned in prison. <laughs> well, certain books are banned worldwide, though. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you can't, you're not allowed to read them. Certain things taken out of, you know, the Gospels and stuff, not allowed to read them. Certain things getting taken off YouTube and stuff, but well, let's not go into <laughs> yeah. that. All right, so you're in school then. You're a normal lad, you know, into your sports, enjoying your subjects, learning all this stuff, meeting uh, girls your age, and then... What was your plan to do after you finished school? Uh, either be a professional basketballer or a professional golfer. Really? One of the two. Wow. So I'm kind of semi-pro at both, I'd say, even now at my old age. Yeah. Old age. Old age, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 40, man. You know? so... <laughs> <laughs> and what actually happened? What did, what did you do when you finished school? And how old were you? I went to jail. <laughs> what was your first run-in with the law then? Was that it? Nah, bro, it was it was a mad ride. It was a mad ride. My mum kicked me out when I was 14, coming oh, 15. No. Kicked me out, yeah, onto the streets. I lived on the streets for, for what a while reason? in Doncaster. For some stupidness, man, do you know what I mean? She regrets it to this day, so she should. Love you, mum. You know, I love you and that, but I told you before I come on this podcast. I was going to be honest, man, so sorry, mum, but you know, I'm just going to put it how it is, yeah? Right? She, bro, she, she kicked me out when I was 14, 15, because yeah. I basically, and this is the reason why, I didn't get on with her fella. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't my dad. Her and my dad had split up. I didn't get on with her fella. That was the core reason. So she kicked me out while I was still at school onto the streets, man. I lived on the streets. I had nowhere to go, right? I ended up living in a bed sit underneath loads of prostitutes. Now, what I will say to you is those prostitutes were nice women. They looked after me. Do you know what I mean? But from then, I went to Birmingham, bro, to a group of people that I'd known from Birmingham before going back to Doncaster after my mum and dad split up. Bro, fucking hell. They absolutely tortured me, bro. The people you moved in with? They tortured me. They fucking tortured me. All my crime was done through having to pay them money for this and that or I was going to get battered. Dog set on me. You don't understand what I went through, Sean. It was rough. Rough. No human should ever have to go through that, mate. Take, it was take, take us there. Rough. Slow down. Take us there. So you arrive in Birmingham. What's this place you arrive at? What does it look like? I arrived to a high-rise flat. I arrived to a high-rise flat, bro. To the, yeah. Basically, these lads. Do you know what I mean, right? Now, yeah, these yeah. lads are into crime. They are they are boys around the area that I come from. They are like the boys, do you know what I mean, right? So I've gone, I'm living in a flat with these guys. And, it, bro, I couldn't even have a bath. Because if I had a bath, yeah, it was a high-rise flat, so there's no windows in them bathrooms. Do you know what I mean? They'd spray CS gas in the fucking bathroom, bro, and lock me in. Do you know what I mean? So I couldn't even have a bath, bro. If I was late paying rent, he'd set his fucking dog on me. Do you know what I mean? So these were lads in the 20s, were they? These were lads all older than me, yeah. All, all older, older than me. Than you. And they were trying to, like use you to make money for them, were they? No, not necessarily. What it was, was they didn't like who I was because I was a nice person. I wasn't a fighter. And they was all into crime and battering people all the time. So they wanted to turn me into them. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't want that. I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't take drugs or nothing at this point. I didn't smoke or fuck all. They used to hold me down and pump fucking blowbacks into me and that, which got me addicted to fucking cannabis. Do you know what I mean? How, and then, how, mate, how did you connect with these people in the first place? Just people I knew from Birmingham back in the day, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously, people that I knew from Birmingham that were willing to take me in, because remember, I had nowhere to go. Yeah. I had fucking nowhere to go. I was living with prostitutes, bro, on Broxholm Lane in Doncaster. Yeah. If there's anybody from Doncaster watching this, you know what Broxholm Lane's like, yeah? Do you know what I mean, right? That's where I was living at 15. So you moved into Smethwick in Birmingham. You're in this bad situation then. No, it was Smevic, mate. That was Smevic. That was Rowley. This is oh, Rowley. was after jail. Got you, got you, got you. All right, so you're in Rowley. You're getting tortured by these guys. And psychologically then, how are you adjusting your mentality? It wasn't that that did it, bro. So I used to basically, like, I can tell you one instance, yeah. So I'm just sat in this flat minding my own business. One of the lads was running and stomped my head into the floor. I killed in a ball and just took it, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like when they used to hold me down and punch me in the face and that, yeah, right? I just used to take it. I used yeah. to curl the ball and take it and cry like a bitch because I didn't know any other way. These were big men to me. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean, course, right? Yeah, I yeah. was petrified of them 
and they took full advantage of that, mate. Mm. The crime that I did, Sean, right, was robbing. Do you know what I mean? Thieving, shit like that, yeah? Yeah, right? yeah. Um, Burglaries and stuff, right? Mm. And I did that because I had rent to pay. If I didn't pay the rent, I'd get smashed to bits. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So then the people I was living with would say, go out and do this. Mm. And then I'd, I'd, I'd be like, I'd be, I'd be torn. I'd be like, well, I don't want to do it because I'm not a criminal, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, but yeah, I've yeah. got to do it. I'm going to get fucked up yeah. again. Yeah, it's horrific, and we totally understand where you're coming from. Can you slowly take us through the day of your arrest, what happened? Bro, they was looking for me for about f a few months, bro. They was after me for a few months because yeah. obviously fingerprints and whatever else they'd got on me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. They was after me for a few months. I found out they was after me. I did try and avoid them. I went back to my nan, bless her soul. Mm. And my nan talked me into handing myself in. She right. went, you will deal with this. You cannot start your life again until you fucking deal with this. Yeah. So I had to shit in my pants, hand myself in. And do you know something, bro? I was facing five to 10 years, man. Yeah. First sentence. How old are you at that point? I was 16, 16 and a half. All right, so you go to what police station and what did you do? Just walk up to a desk? I walked up to Bilston Police Station. They sent me to Wolverhampton yeah. and then I was in Wolverhampton Crown Court. So you walk up to that desk at the police station and what did you say? I said, my name's Daniel Grayson, you're looking for me. Yeah. And they went, hold on, we'll get uh, like a sergeant and he come. Yeah. And he went, you come to hand yourself in? I went, yeah, he went, fair play, mate. He took me, cuffed me, but then I got remanded. I didn't get re like released on bail. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously I'd been running for a few months in it, so I was a flight risk and whatever, so they, they remanded me. So you then get put into a cell. Mm. What was that like? Torture, mate. Mental torture. Were because, you on your own or was other people? Uh, the holding cell, I was with other people. Do you know okay. what I mean? Uh, and then when I got put into the... What, what was your interaction with them like? I didn't interact. You just kept, stayed silent? I just stayed silent, yeah. yeah. I shit my pants, bro. Yeah, yeah, Never been in such a scary situation in my life. And these other people in the cell, were they much older than you? Uh, well, no, it was YOI in it, so it was only from like 16 to 21 years old. Right. Do you know what I mean? So there was nobody above the age of 21. And did they try and start any shit with you? No, they left me alone in the holding cell. Nobody did anything to me there. Okay, and how long were you in there and what, when did you get moved? Uh, I was only in there for a few hours and got to, well, obviously, well, I got remanded into Brinsford. Yeah. So I was in the holding cell for maybe fucking, I don't know, 45 minutes. It felt like a lifetime. And then you got moved, and then what was it like in the next one? Well, I got put into actual cell then. Do you what? know what I mean? With a pad mate. Okay, gotcha. Do you know what I mean? and, yeah, yeah. And it was, I didn't talk for a few days, but he turned out to be an all right bloke, though, my pad mate. So you just never said anything for the first few days? No, nah, he spoke to me first. And you got to, like, take a shit in there in front of him and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, but I wasn't used to none of that stuff, bro. I wasn't yeah. used to none of that. That was a real hard hit to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Having to smell somebody else's shit yeah. every day. Yeah. Every fucking day, bro. It's like living in a toilet, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah. And especially if they don't eat very healthy, they're not healthy anyway. You know what that shit smells like. <laughs> Fucking stinks, bro. Do you know what I mean? And the windows, the windows. Yeah, you got windows. Yeah, I got bars and windows. But the windows fucking only open that far, bro. That ain't letting fuck all out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. What was the food in there then? Boiled everything, bro. Fucking boiled potatoes, boiled cabbage. Listen, when I come out, of 17 stone. Right, so you yeah, yeah. have to some fucking size. Do you Did know what I mean? You? Like, oh, I was yeah. massive, bro, when I come out. I was way bigger than I am now. Yeah, Do you know what yeah. I mean? Right, but <laughs> yeah, boiled everything. Just boiled everything. Meat, sometimes, boiled everything. What did you say to your cellmate when you guys got talking? They just asked me who I was, and you know what I mean? I was still quite shy in that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, it was after I'd had a few kickings and that, that I've, something just snapped, bro. A few kickings inside. Oh yeah, I got fucked up. Go on, describe your first kicking. Then, where where were you when that happened? I was walking down towards the breakfast to get breakfast. Yeah, and I just woke up, bro, on my back, looking at loads of black geezers laughing at me. Really? And then I found out afterwards some geezer had come up behind me and just put me to sleep. Yeah, just smacked you in the jaw or something. No, no, just put or choke sleep. hold. Put choke me to sleep. Yeah, put me to sleep. Wow. Fucking scared the life out of me, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought to myself in my brain, because obviously the lads I've been living with, they'd all gone to jail, so they'd all told me horror stories, bro. People getting and everything, do you know what I mean, right? So yeah. I was thinking, I could have got, then I wouldn't have even been able to do anything about it, you know what I mean? I was, I was unconscious. Yeah, yeah. Fucking freaked me out, that dude, bro. Yeah. What was the next kicking you got? Uh, it was over, like, obviously I was going through education because I couldn't get a job straight away. You know how jobs are reserved in jail for certain people. Yeah. So I couldn't get a job straight away. So I was going to education, I was getting like seven quid a week in it. So I bought some canteen mm. and I literally bought a couple of packs of biscuits and a little thing of tobacco. That's all I could afford. Yeah. Walking back up the stairs, mate, bang, bang, bang in my fucking jaw. I'm on the floor, yeah, with a bust up mouth and the geese just took my shit. No reason. Never even, never even had no interaction with this bloke before in my entire fucking life. Savage. Yeah, savage as fuck. What was the next one? 
it was like the last straw, bro. Really, you know I mean, it? I've gone down. I've like, I'm sat. In, so I'm sat in my in my pad, and I'm debating. Right, it's hard for me to say this because of the way I'm now. I'm debating whether to just fucking top myself, bro. I've mm -hmm. had enough because from for that just over three years that I was in jail, yeah, I had no visits, no postal mm -hmm. orders, no letters. My whole family just left me to rot. Do you know what I mean, right? So I just thought there's no fucking point. Yeah. So I was gonna top myself, bro. I was literally gonna top myself. I was tying my sheets together. I was gonna hang myself off my bars. Do you know what I mean? I just mm. had enough. Do you know what I mean? Right. And then, uh, bro, do you know something? I'm crying my eyes out on that. Mm. Yeah. Right. Because I know I'm gonna kill myself. I'm wondering what my dad's face is gonna look like when he sees my body and all that. So I'm fucking crying like a bitch. Yeah. And it turned into hysterical laughter. Do you know what I mean? Like sick hysterical laughter. And I sat there all night thinking about the most bloodiest things you've ever imagined in your life. And it's turned me psychotic in one night. I went from normal to fucking nuts in one night. Went down for, went down for breakfast again. Gee went tried to take my food. We had metal trays, innit? I smashed him to fucking bits, bro. It took a lot of screws to pull me off as well that day, yeah? And I was only like him. But my son's there. You can see my son. Yeah, I was like yeah, him, yeah. bro. Yeah. And it took a lot of men to pull me off. Because once I lost it, the power that I felt, the fucking power, bro, was unreal. Like, I can throw men around like a ragdoll, and I'm 11 and a half stone wet through, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then yeah. once I, do you know something? Once I realised that power, my whole aura changed. I battered a few people. Do you know what I mean? I had a geezer like I'm sat on, I'm sat on a weight bench in, in the gym. Rather than confront me like a man, yeah, he's come and smashed me in a fucking... I've got a big scar on the back of my head, yeah? He's smashed me in a, with a dumbbell in the back of the head, a 10-key dumbbell, oh. thinking he's going to drop me, bro. I've gone like that, looked at him, bang, 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 bit his nose off. You know what I mean? Once I learned what they could do, you know, once I learned what they could do, mate, they are fucking deadly as fuck. They will stop a man in his tracks. I'm telling you now. Wow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then it was block, it was block, and sat in the block and just winding myself. Winding myself, preparing myself for war. Every fucking day, war. You want some, I'll give it ya. You fucking want some, I'll give it ya. And that's what I did for years, bro. Do you know what I mean? And then I came out, what you see before you, but much bigger, much nastier. I've learned to control it somewhat now. Yeah, but when I was fucking, when I come out of jail at 20 years of age, mate, I was a fucking lunatic. This is fascinating, Danny. It's really interesting because you've like, took us on this journey from your childhood to these horrendous things that have happened to you. And you've really set the table skillfully so people understand how just an innocent kid, savaged and brutalized, can just snap in one day and think, right, I'm not having this anymore. I've now got to be worse than them to stop them from doing this to me. I've always thought like that, sure. Yeah, yeah. I will hurt you more than you've ever been hurt in your life and you will never come back for seconds, buddy. Yeah. Trust me, I will fuck you up to have an inch of your life. I will drink you like a vampire, bitch. Do you know what I mean, right? And that is why, no lie, this is no gas to anybody on camera. I'm not fucking lying here, right? Where I live, no fucker will come and cause trouble with me. Now, I don't cause trouble, Sean. This is the thing that people need to understand, right? I don't cause nothing. I st I don't dr I'm not a drug dealer, right? I'm not a gangster, yeah? I'm a family man. I stay the fuck out of everybody's business. I don't get involved. Do you know what I mean, right? But then people think sometimes that they can come and take the piss at my front door. You're gonna now. The thing is, people always say to me, "How do you do... how do you go so psychotic so quick?" Right? I'm gonna tell you this fucking straight. Right? You come to my door. I imagine you, my wife, mate. I imagine you, my wife. So now I'm gonna. Fucking kill ya! Now I'm gonna tear your head off and drink everything that is inside ya! I'm gonna rip your fucking brain out, you cunt! And that is how I can switch it on that quick. That's how I can do it, Sean. Because that's the thoughts that I think of. Because I have now got a sick mind when I choose to be sick. That's the and it's society that's done that, bro. It's society, leave me the fuck alone. I don't I don't hassle you. I don't come near you. Why the fuck are you coming near me? Would you say it's society or the scumbags in society? It's the scumbags in society. It's not all of society, Sean. Some people are lovely, mate. The interactions that I have, I mean, this is a podcast, right? So, hold on a minute. Right, this is a podcast, yeah? Right? So at the end of the day, I, I, I explained to you before, if I get angry and that, nothing's going to happen. It's just me explaining stuff and stuff won't make me angry, yeah? 
I'm a very nice person, bro. <laughs> I am. I know I might not look it sometimes, but I'm a nice fucking person. I want the best for everybody, right? I got lots of compassion. That's something I never lost from when I was a kid. Did not lose compassion. Do you know what I mean, right? I don't, I'm not a bully. I don't start trouble with fucking nobody. But bro, if you start with me, man, whatever happens to you, that's not my problem. I haven't asked for this. You know what I mean? There's just so many shit stirrers and troublemakers in the world. Oh, there is. They won't leave they? people alone, will they? No, they won't. They'll keep prodding and prodding and yeah. prodding until they create a monster. Yeah. And then society that's created that monster doesn't like what they've created. Well, do you know something? I'm fucking sorry. But do you know something? I, do you know for me, Sean, I could probably, because I meditate a lot now. I meditate an awful lot. That's what's enabled me to put it deeper than I've ever been able to put it before, right? Been able to switch in and out. I, I can do it through meditation, right? But to be honest with you, man, if I was allowed, just left alone now for the rest of my life and nobody actually tried to fucking fight me or anything, I was just left alone, yeah? I will never have a fight ever again because I am a reactive guy. I'm, I don't cause shit. I just react to situations, man, that other people put me in. That's what I am, bruv. It makes sense, and I'm sure everybody watching this has got your back and feels for you after what you went through. So in The Young Offenders then, you've changed now. You're striking back at these bullies. Does that say send a ripple effect out whereby people start living, leaving you alone, or is it such a gladiator school they're thinking, right, nah, if nah. this guy thinks he's the biggest lunatic, if we take him down, we're going to get a bigger name than him? No, it, what, no. What, what's, what's the dynamic? No, it was the dynamic change from... Me whacking up a few people to then everybody just leave me the fuck alone. Right. They just left me the fuck alone. So it's like pure animal. But I wasn't thing, like, I wasn't like, I wasn't, like I said to you, I wasn't running around the wing threatening people. I wasn't going into pads and robbing people. Yeah. I wasn't mixing with anybody. I was a lone person. And that's yeah. how I've been all my life since. Yeah, a lone yeah. person. Yes, I have friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. But whenever I have to deal with anything, yeah. do it myself. Lone wolf. I guess once a nose has been bitten off, it kind of sets an example to other people to stay away from you. Yeah, it sets an example, yeah. yeah. They don't want no more after that. Yeah. So what was your routine like in The Young Offenders once you'd established yourself? Uh, first of all, I became landing cleaner. Yeah. Through becoming landing cleaner, obviously I got to know quite a few people and I used to like pass... Can I say this? Pass parcel? Can I? Can yeah, I, yeah. Can, you say can, I, can you I, want. I talk about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah right? course, so yeah, yeah, I, I used yeah. to obviously be a landing cleaner, everyone. You go to a man's pad, yeah, and he passes you something, and then you take it to the next man, but you get something out of that for passing it. Do you know what I mean? So I, I was quite enterprising from that moment on. I saw everybody else earning money out of phone cards, backy, weed. I saw them all just flogging it everywhere and earning a lot of money, to be fair, Sean, yeah? And I was just like, fuck, I want some of this. So I was landing cleaner, so I was getting like parcels and that, and maybe having a spliff, but then selling a spliff for 50 fucking quid, to other people, do you know what I mean, right? Who was coming in and they'll sell them for 50 quid and then they'd have to give me like phone cards and backy to pay for that 50 quid out of the canteen. And then my pad went from empty to really full really quick. Do you know what I mean? And then everybody, nobody come and rob me after that. So, do you know what I mean? And then I became Jim Audley. And Jim Audley is really the top position that I wanted in the, in the jail. And once I became Jim Audley, mate, my time flew. Did you have a fitness at, routine? Yeah, bro, I used to get up like... Every morning, hundreds of press-ups, hundreds of sit-ups, yeah? Then I'd get down to the gym, I'd do my work, then I'd be in the gym. Do you know what I mean? Then I'd play whatever sport they was going to do in the afternoon with the wings, yeah? Or we'd ref, depending on what the actual gym screws wanted us to do. Clean out the showers and whatever, but then we'd be allowed to go in the gym again. And then I'd go back to my wing, I'd have my food, I'd go back in my pad, I'd put my mattress up against the wall and just start smashing it. Because I had a single pad then. When I became gym orderly, I, was a, I had a single pad, my own fucking pad. I could do what the fuck I wanted in there, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I became massive, bro. Huge, strong as fuck. You said you went up to 17 stone. Was that solid muscle? Well, it's never going to be solid because of the diet. Do you know what I mean? The diet is boiled vegetables, a lot of carbohydrates. So I'd say not solid, but quite solid. Imagine somebody on steads, yeah? Imagine somebody on steads, you know, when they've got that, like, puffy kind of, like that. That's what you look like if you eat bare carbs, everyone. If you eat bare carbs, you will get big, but you will be puffy with it. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got videos on your channel, don't you, of you working out and, and doing fighting moves and stuff. Yeah, I train like a beast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right, so how was your court case going during this period of your life? Uh, well, obviously, uh, this is... this once I, once I was, I mean, this is 
we've kind of skipped to me getting sentenced. I'm, I'm in jail now, bro. I've been sentenced. 27 months detained, I got. Yeah, yeah. I got 27 months detained. If people don't know the criminal system, I don't know if it works the same now, but like 20 years ago or whatever, yeah, you get a detained sentence, you have to do the lot, right? You don't do half. So you get 27 months now, just 27 months, you've got 13 months or something. Good behavior, you might be out on 11. You get a detained sentence, you've got to do the lot. So I got 27 months detained, I ended up with six months and extra days. More than that, but the 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 uh, governors of the jail said to me towards the end of my sentence, if you behave and don't cause no ruckus or anything like that, we'll knock some shit off. So I ended up doing 27 months plus six, 33 months. All right, before we continue the jail then, take us through the day of your sentencing. What was that like? Did you get woken up at a certain hour in your cell and told? Uh, yeah, I was woken up at seven in the morning. Seven in the morning. Um, obviously, I was in Brinsford, then taken to the courts. Sat downstairs in the courts for fucking hours, bro, before I was called up. How were you feeling at that point? Shit in my pants. I was did, being told I was going to get 10 years, bro. So you were looking at 10? I was looking at 10. And would you have to do with the whole 10 on that? Well, no, the whole 10. I mean, if, if, if it's going to be 10 years, then I'm probably, mm. I mean, what would I do? About seven and a half or something like that? I, I think that's how it would have worked in knocking my head. Knocking off time served, you mean? Yeah, knocking off time served. It yeah. would have been about seven and a half, I think I would have done. Yeah. So I was in my head thinking I'm going to do seven and a half fucking years here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you're, in, you're, <clears throat> you're thinking of the worst case scenario. You get taken out of the cell and put in the court. And what was the atmosphere in the court like? My nan was crying. Mm. Uh, crying a little heart out. Did she speak on your behalf? She did. How did that feel, the hearing her speak? She was crying for the whole of it, bro. It was really rough. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was... Uh... <sighs> Bless her. Fuck, you know, come on, Danny, you big man. It's just she's dead now, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's just of course, fucking thinking yeah. about me nan again. Looking after me when she didn't have to. Bless her. Yeah. Yeah, she was just crying her eyes at me, so it was really hard to listen to. Really fucking hard. She then always had your back. Yeah. 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 She did. She was the only person she sent me three letters at the beginning of my sentence and three five pound post orders, bless her. But then after that, um, I think my uncle Roy, you cunt. Do you know what I mean? Right, told her not to come and visit me no more, so she didn't come after that. I didn't get no letters or nothing. Why did he do that? Because he's a fucking cunt. Thing is, my uncle Roy, like you, he won't watch this, but if you do, you know, mate. All right. So the judge then, the, the prosecutor, come out and say like a, a load of stuff against you. Well, basically, um, it was all the charges brought up, um, and she was going on like I was a career criminal, bro. She was like going on like I had no remorse and I was a career criminal and do you know what I mean? Ra 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 ra, fucking ra. She was making me sound like a right cunt. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. And then obviously my solicitor stood up and explained some of the extenuating circumstances. Um, but to be honest with you, the police, do you know when the police arrested me, right? They wanted the people I was living with because they was the criminals, bro. They wanted the people I was living with and I didn't give them up. And the police were all right with me until the moment when I said, look, I said in an interview, I said, look, I says, I know what you're after here, bro. I said, it's not going to happen. I says, I did the crime, I'll do the time. Now, yes, I, most of that shit I did, these people did with me or made me do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I took it myself on my own fucking chin. Do you know what I mean, right? And I don't think, I don't think it went too well for me, bro, to be honest. Right. So when the sentence came down then, were you surprised? Well, yeah, because I turned around, because I obviously, because of the lads I've been living with, I knew a little bit about sentences and stuff, mm. do you know what I mean? And I looked at him, I didn't hear the detained bit, bro. So I, I didn't hear that. Yeah. So I looked at him and I went, what am I going to do like just over a year then? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And he went, no, you've got to do it. You've got the detained sentence. I was like, what does that even mean? Yeah. So I was really happy thinking I'm going to do just over a year. And then he told me and I was like, fuck. And then I sunk again. Do you, do you get to take your back time off that? No. Your remand time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So with 27 months then, with your back time taken off, you thought you were going to get 10 years. Was it still a relief? Yes, of course it was. A fucking really big, 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 big relief. So did you just feel a, a, like lighter and a load lifted? Yeah, off I felt you? really light. And then obviously, once I arrived into the atmosphere of the jail, then it. I, 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 whoa. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was like, whoa. Do you know what I mean? It was like the worst. I've never experienced nothing like it in my life, bro. Yeah. It was like the fucking jungle. Yeah. The fittest survive and the weakest just die, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's yeah. fucking. It, when you say atmosphere, then could you just expand on that a bit? Like you're talking about the noise, the guards, the keys, the people looking at you, the smell. Bro, though, do you know the worst thing about it when you first get in there? Yeah. Right, is the lads, there's no need to do this, right? Yeah. Smashing the fucking windows, banging the windows, calling you all wankers. We're going to smash you in, rah, rah, and they're just giving you the worst night of your life, bro. And it's not good. 
You know what I mean? It's not good to do that to a young boy who's shitting his pants anyway. Because you're the fresh meat. Yeah, I'm fresh, bro. So they're just banging on my floor, my wall. We're going to get your rah rah smashing windows. Yeah. You know what I mean? It takes my pad mate to stand up and go to the window and go, yo, shut the fuck up, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then the, yeah. and then they leave it because obviously they know who it is. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, that mate. And just, do you know, like, showers, bro. Mm. Do you know before you become somebody who can look after yourself? Yeah. You're not going in any kind of shower. You've watched Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, yeah you've watched too many films, bro. <laughs> You've just watched too many. You've heard too many stories. I can be a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bend over and pick up that soap bar. <laughs> oh, you got some rosy cheeks. <laughs> no, bro, you're not going to be doing that. You can't be having it. You just can't be having it, bro. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, Jesus Christ, I don't want to walk like John Wayne for the rest of my life. Move the fuck away from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary situation, them showers, mate. It is. If, you've, you... if you've seen all these scenes in these movies, you're going in prison for the first time, you're thinking, oh my God, what's the show? Yeah they, don't, like, yeah, they don't fucking help. They don't I, was help. In, I was in and out there like that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Turn them all on, run straight through them, back out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, so was there anyone then who you particularly bonded with during that sentence? Um, no. No? No. Total lone wolf. Total lone wolf, yeah. yeah. Total. I had a couple of instances where I got along with a couple of guys. Yeah. guy actually from Liverpool. Really? Mad fuck. Do you know what I mean? He was yeah, crazy yeah. as fuck, yeah, but he really made me laugh because I'm not joking with you. Do you know how I first met this dude? Do you want to give a shout out to him? Oh, I can't remember his name, you really? know. I can't remember your name, bro. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but if you're watching this, right, it's that many years ago. I met so many people since. I do apologise, but you'll know who you are. What year was it? It was, fucking now let me think. I was 17 and a half then, isn't it? So I'm 40 now, so 23 years ago. 23 years ago, so late 90s. Yeah, late 90s, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, it's a shout out to you, bro, if you know who you are. You're in Liverpool, you might watch this, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm not joking with you, bro. He's come in, he's sat there on Soch, yeah. and lads are betting him phone cards. And I was like, what the fuck's going on here? I want to know what's going on, do you know what I mean? Right? So I walked over, I'm just curious. I'm, bro, this geezer is stubbing out fags on his nipples, bro, for phone cards. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Do you know what I mean? I swear, I had to do one. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, bro, I'll get your phone card. Stop a fag out on your nipple. Do you know what I mean? Because back then, everyone, you could smoke in jail, by the way. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah, right. You can't now, but you could then. Do you know what I mean, right? So, yeah, my man's just stubbing fucking fags out on his nipples, bro. And do you know something? The crazy cunt actually got you, got me, didn't you, to do it once. I didn't make out of the whole stubbing, did I? That shit hurts, bro. How the fuck did you keep putting yourself through that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he was just, I swear, just tss on his nipple, bro. Tss on his nipple, bro. Phone cards. <sighs> Craziest geezer I've ever known in my life. But I spent. I used to play chess with him. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I love playing chess. Yeah, I used to play chess with him and he was a good lot chess, of chess player. In prison. Good chess player. Yeah. Crazy guy, but good chess yeah. player. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What was the craziest stuff you saw in that jail? More here than see. I mean, I saw a few geezer get stabbed. Yeah, you know over I mean? what? Um, it was always over drugs, bro. Drug debts. It was always over drug debts. Yeah. It was always some. A lot of smackheads. Yeah. A lot of smackheads getting forked up, man. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because they come in, they're getting a debt they can't handle because they're smackheads. They've got nobody on the outside paying them that kind of money. Yeah. They persuade the dealer that they have got, I've got 300 quid. Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Here's your stuff. A week later, bro, man's been jucked up. The guy, the guy who owed the money to has got an extra 10 years on his fucking sentence. Do you know what I mean? Right? Nobody wins in that yeah. situation. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also, do you know, like, I've never seen it. I've never seen anyone get... Sean, right? Mm. But hearing it, hearing it, bro. Mm. Seriously, hearing it, it's. I've heard it, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. nothing you can do to help this person. You're locked in a fucking cell, you're on a different wing, the, up above you on a nonce wing or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right? But still, just hearing it, bro. It's fucking horrible. You know what I mean? T Bone said to me that he was in a, on a, in a prison and um, so many dudes were getting. You could smell it on the run, like this, this, the stink of fucking shit on the oh, run. Oh, that's disgusting. Getting these, and then like the, the See, smack, I was never on that wing. Smack, smack, I was smack. never on that wing, but yeah. like, you've got H-wing in Brinsford. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's nonce wing. Yeah. yeah. I was on E-wing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So I could hear that shit, bro. Do you know what I mean? Fucking horrible. I swear yeah. to God, horrible. And do you know something? So you're saying it was happening on the nonce wing? Happening on the nonce wing. Do you right, know what I mean? But right, we could right. hear it, bro. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Man's yeah. screaming for his life. Yeah. And do you, know, do you know how long it takes before you hear keys, bro? Or you hear anything, any kind of commotion? It takes forever for them to respond. Yeah, it's like, it's like they're just sat there in the office drinking the cup of tea. Yeah, he's getting... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll go and get him in a minute. Let me finish my cup of tea. Yeah. Do you know mean yeah. fucking run down there? The geezer's getting out, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, to be honest with you, I will say one thing. Mm -hmm. If you're up there, 
As yeah. bad as it, it's horrible to listen to, right? But do you know something? You're up there for a reason, aren't you? What you're karma. up there for? Karma. What you're up there for, mate? It's karma, isn't it? Yeah, it's karma. Yeah. As horrible as it is to listen to, and as I know some of you people are going to say, oh, that's horrible. Mate, do you know what they're up there for? Do you know what they're up there for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't get put on that wing for no fucking reason, mate. Did you ever see someone with that kind of offence uh, go into the general population and get yeah, dealt I've with? Yeah, I think he's get sucked. Sucked. So fucked. To fuck, bro. He got sucked to fuck what was by in me. The sock? Do you know what I mean? Pool balls. Pool balls. On social, bro. They yeah. battered him. Yeah. Two of them. Two geezers absolutely yeah. battered him, bro. We battered him hard. Yeah. Blood all over the place. I saw it. Didn't get involved. Wasn't nothing to do with me, but I saw that. Of course, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, any funny moments in the jail? Oh, mate. The last day was quite funny. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because obviously, I've opened up my pad. Yeah. yeah, they've opened up the pad, bro, and like I've walked down to my to. They said I could get like I could go and see four of my mates, four of the people who I knew while I was in there. Yeah. So I've gone. I've knocked on the pads. They didn't expect it to be honest. I've gone, lads. They mm -hmm. said they'll let you out over to my pad. Come and fucking empty my pad out. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So they've come over and emptied my pad out. Yeah, right. And the reason I let them four lads do it <laughs> is because the night before on Soj, <laughs> they knew I was getting released. <laughs> so they, there was big Jim Audleys. Yeah. yeah. So they come and fucking got me, bro. Put me in the big ass fucking industrial tumble dryer. Turn the shit on, bro. With me no. in there. I swear to God, turn the shit on with me no. in there, bro. Yeah, literally put me in the tumble dryer and turned it on. How's that feel? Fucking dizzy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Dizzy, bro. That was a fucking, it was funny as fuck. Oh. I did not expect it. Sat there minding my own business, bro. And next to I'm just getting manhandled into a fucking like washing machine. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was fucking funny. Does that make you want to throw up? Yeah, yeah. They only turned it on for a little bit, man, but it was funny. Yeah. It was fucking funny. They was creasing when I got out of that work. That yeah. I took it in good spirits, man. What was your post release plan? Well, my post release plan mm. was to go back to my mum's in. Doncaster, yeah, yeah, right, because she felt bad, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? That she just left me there to rot. She felt fucking bad, bro. Do you know what yeah, I mean, right? So yeah. I could, I went back to Doncaster, and that lasted for about two days, bro, before it went really tits up and had to leave. So the guy was gone, was he? No, he had a problem with he no, was still no, there. No, no, sure, and don't stop it, bro. Bro, listen, yeah. I've come back, yeah, out of jail, come out of jail, gone to Doncaster, see my mom. Mom's got like a, like a. A deep scratch on the neck. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, I. She's just said to me she'd hurt herself, so I just took it as gospel. Yeah, my brother Simon, right, has phoned me. I'm, I've only been there a day, bro. He's phoned me and yeah. he's gone. Have you heard what's happened? I've gone. What are you on about, bro? He's gone. Have you heard what Joey's done to mom? I've gone. Nah, nah. He's gone. Danny, she's he sliced her fucking throat. He's tried to slice her throat. I've only just been out of jail. So my brother then, right? Don't forget before I went to jail. Yeah, because of what I'd done and that, Simon just washed his hands of me. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So when I come out of jail, he saw the little boy that went in, but he didn't understand what was coming out. So Simon basically said, don't do nothing. I'm coming. I'll be there tonight. We're going to do it together. We're going to fucking kill him. I've just come out of jail, but because of the mentality of me now, I'm like, slice my mum's neck. Slice mum's neck. So we went to this pub called Oliver's, yeah, and we was all having a drink and that. And at some point, Joey's gone downstairs to the toilet, so me and Simon went down to deal with him. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Joey was wrecked, yeah. So he's having a shit on the toilet, bro. Mm. He's looked at me and Bert and he's gone, what, you think you can fucking do it, boys? You think you can do it? And he stood up and he whacked Simon in the face. <laughs> Simon's hit him, and as Simon's hit him, I've rugby tackled him, bro, through the cubicle wall. And he was knocked out. I knocked him out with that rugby tackle. Wow. I dragged, grabbed him by his fucking hair, yeah. dragged him out and threw him on the floor. Yeah, I said, yeah. my brother says, what are we going to do? I'm, what are you going to do? Get on that fucking sink and jump on his face. I'm going to hold it. And Simon looked at me like, what? I went, get on the fucking sink and jump on his head, bro. And I did, I held his head there, bro, and he jumped both feet onto his face. Blood come out of his ears. We thought we'd done the job. We've walked up to the top now, out the front, yeah? At this point, all the bouncers from Donny, who know this guy, have come to fight me and my brother. Yeah. Until I've gone, yeah, do you know what he's done? He's tried to slice my mum's fucking throat. Well, don't forget, my dad was respecting him, Donny. Yeah, so when they found that out, they just dis they, they didn't want none. No one yeah. makes a woman be so... Fucking Joey, yeah. mate. Yeah. Joey's come walking out the fucking pub, bro. Yeah. Why, you want some fucking more? I was like, what the fuck? I swear it was like seeing a dead man. I'm not even joking. I was like, what the fuck? And then I've all... Do you know what's happened? Listen to this, bro. My mum, yeah, right? She's gone up to my brother. I know it was your fault. Give him a love and a kiss. It was you, you bastard. And then just attack the fuck out of me, bro. Beat the shit out of my face. I mean, I let her, she's my mom, innit? But she <laughs> battered the fuck out of me, bro. Do you know what I mean? I swear to God. And then obviously, because of all that kicked off, I had to come back to Birmingham. Oh my God. <laughs> so did she stay with him? Still with him to this day. Holy but shit. But the thing is, Sean, what I will say, right, is that was years ago. That was literally yeah, obviously years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. He learned from that. 
Yeah. And yeah. he's never done nothing like that ever again. Okay. Ever again, Sean. He's never even gone down that road. Yeah. So he learned yeah. his lesson that day. He learned. Yeah. yeah. And now we get on. Because people get, get wasted and they get out of control and sometimes don't even remember what they've done, don't they? That's what it was with Joey. He, yeah. he used to get wrecked. But wrecked. it's no excuse, is it? No, it's no excuse, yeah, but if you yeah. can't handle it, don't do it. Don't do it, yeah. yeah. I'm a happy drunk, man. If I was a nasty drunk, do you think I'd be getting drunk? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so things moved on then from that situation. You went back to Birmingham. And where did you move? In Birmingham, where were you living? I moved in with my brother, Simon. Okay. And his then girlfriend, Sam. Yeah. That was in Smethwick. In Smethwick. And did they have a house or a flat? They had a house. They had a house. Yeah. And what was that neighbourhood like? Rough as fuck, bro. Was it? Smethwick, Smethwick to this, listen to this. Do you know the other day, I'm not going to mention no names on that. Yeah, but the other day, bro, do you know what I mean? In Smethwick, geezer, mushed out of his tits, drove into a, this was on the news, bro, drove into a woman and two kids with a pram and oh dragged God. the fucking pram down the road, didn't even stop, bro. Oh, my God. That's Smevic fear. Do you know what I mean? That's Smevic fear. And was a lot of damage done to the people he hit? I think they're nearly dead, bro. Jesus. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Shocking. So you you and your brother are in this place then, and you must be contemplating how you're going to make a living. Yeah. What did you decide to do? Uh, I was just any work, bro, when I first come out. I was taking yeah. any work that I could get agencies and shit like that. Yeah. Any work I could get when I first come out. So can you give us an example of the work you did? Uh, when I first came out, I was working, doing like press work in factories and stuff like that. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then actually, I went to uh, British Gas and did some call centre work. Yeah. Because <laughs> you imagine I'm quite good on the phones. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I did some call centre work. But British Gas closed down on that location mm. and they were going to move me to miles away. But I wasn't driving then. I'd fresh come out of jail. I wasn't driving. I was on probation. I couldn't really get to different areas and all that kind of shit. Was your conviction a problem um, trying to get a job? Or did you just withhold <laughs> so it? Just withheld it, bro. If that's what the doll said to me. Don't tell them. Yeah, I ain't telling never get a job. I ain't telling nobody about my... Listen, yeah. I'm, I'm an employer. I'm really going to tell you I've been to jail. You ain't going to employ me, bro. <laughs> all right, so you're on the straight and narrow then. You, you're doing various work. Sounds like you enjoyed some of it. What happened that got you... You know, did somebody challenge you or did some shit come your way? Right. Living with my brother was sad. Mm. Um, not really anything exciting, really. What you was your I mean? brother like back then? Was he quite a normal person? He wasn't... No, he's, he's like I am now. Yeah. Simon's always been like that. Do yeah. you know what I mean, right? Um, he don't take no shit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean, right? But we like... I moved in with him, it was sad. I met... <laughs> His girlfriend's older sister. Girlfriend's older sister, yeah. Now, my yeah, brother's yeah, older yeah, than me, yeah, yeah. so but I met I met his girlfriend's older sister. Her name is Tony. My wife now. It's my wife, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. I met her literally a, weeks after moving to Birmingham. Wow. Um, I sent a photo of her, bro. Mm -hmm. And I said to my brother, I went, she will be mine, bro. <laughs> now, Tony's <laughs> an up, upstanding woman. Yeah, she's a very, she's a proper lady. Right. Yeah. So my brother turned around to me and went, You've got fucking no chance, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro, you was wrong with all your kids and everything, mate. Marriage and everything. Yeah, I was right, Warrior, bro. She'd be mine. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, right? I was right, mate. Do you know what I mean, right? So, yeah, so me and Tony got together. Tony lived in a bit of a rougher part of Smevic. Okay, yeah, yeah. And she had Anthony, the son, you know, the son that I lost, unfortunately. Yeah. She had Anthony, and Anthony was a little toe rag. Do you know what I mean? So he kind of brought trouble, <laughs> the little shit. Yeah. R.I.P. son, but I know you're a little terror. Yeah, you know I mean, he brought trouble to the door, and that's when I first started fighting. Okay, just let's go back a second because we love a good love, love story on the channel. You said we got together. That's quite a jump. How did you get together after your brother said you, there's no, you don't stand the chance? Right, I was working at, at the British Gas Place, yeah. So I used to walk past hers every day to get on the bus to go to work. Yeah, and where I she used, lived, you're saying? You where, she, where she lived? Where she lived. Yeah, yeah I used yeah, to walk yeah. past hers every day to get yeah. on the bus, right? <laughs> and I used to literally walk. So you could walk on the main road outside hers. Yeah. Hers was like a masonette kind of thing. Or you could walk round the back and all the way through. I used to walk round the back every day, bro. Just <laughs> hoping that I'd see this woman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, right? Just, just praying that I'd see this woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? She noticed. I know she noticed. Yeah. Because she'd be in the kitchen window to begin with, waving at me. And then I'm not joking with you, bro. I'd come back from work. I'd walk back round the same way. <laughs> yeah. And then after a while, she was like, after about, I don't know, a week or something, she was like, Do you want to come in for a cup of tea? Oh. Right. Now she was with the geezer at the time. Really? A geezer named Kevin. The, yeah. 
yeah. ever so funny this bro right yeah, yeah. so I've been out now and I've been having cups of tea with Tony I've just been talking to her yeah, yeah I'm not going to try and obviously shag her once she's with another man but I'm thinking like if you and him ever split up yeah if you and him ever split up yeah I'm straight in there man I'm telling you it's fucking I'm, just, I'm not even waiting a day yeah. do you know what I mean right yeah but New Year's Eve come and she invited me around for a New Year's Eve party mm. and I had a girlfriend named Shelly at the time a mm. South African girl yeah right Sorry, Shelly. Right, I've gone round there now with Shelly. Didn't not, I'm not expecting nothing, no, Sean. Right, yeah, so yeah. I've gone down there with my brother, his missus, which is Tony's sister, Shelly, my girlfriend. Sorry, yeah, and me, Tony and her fella. Right, yeah, yeah. we're having a drink and that. Towards the end of the night, Tony and Kevin started having a row. Yeah, she said, fuck off, dickhead. Do you know what I mean? That's what she said to him, fuck off, dickhead. Do you know what I mean? Right, so I'm not trying to rap. Right? I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, it's time to go. So we, we saw the new year in, and when yeah. we was leaving, bro. She gave Sam a kiss on the cheek, my brother a kiss on the cheek. She gave Shelly a kiss on the cheek. Bro, she grabbed me and stuck it on my throat. <laughs> in front of my then missus and in front of fucking Kevin. Weeks of And waving. I could have pulled away, but nah, I just carried on, bro. <laughs> 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 carried on. So that was it. Your, that was missus, it. your missus was like, it's over. Well, she was convinced that I'd been shagging her for weeks. Oh. And I was like, Shelly, I swear to God, I've been around there, I've had cups of tea and that, but I haven't done nothing. Yeah. That was totally out of the blue. No, I don't believe you. And then, yeah, we split up. So how old were you at that point of the story? I was 20. So you was 20. Wow. That's, Nearly 21. That's, that's a really good story. All right. So you're dating and, um, you know, how how does it get serious? One month I moved in, bro. Oh, no, 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 no gas. I just, I just literally, after one month, right, yeah. I was like, Fuck this. I went round to her house with my clothes. Yeah. And I knocked the door. She opened the door. She went, all right, Daniel, I'm moving in town. So wow. I come in there. All right. So, <laughs> you, so you got, you've done your time. You're a reformed character. You've got a good woman in your life. You've got a job. How does the dark stuff start happening? Smethic, mate. Yeah. Smethic, mate. Do you know what I mean? What was the first incident? The first incident was some lads round the back of my where Tony lived when I moved when I moved in with Tony around the back of the Masonettes. And they used to do drug deals down the bottom. Right. But on that day they'd spun round there and nearly at Anthony. Do you know what I mean? So I went down there, I'm like, lads, listen, fucking pack it in. Do you know what I mean? I said, I ain't I ain't taking a piss or anything, right? But I'm telling you now, you don't even fucking live here. So if you want to be spinning your cars up, yeah, fuck off. One of them got out of the car and went, what are you saying? I just dead butted him, bro, knocked him clean out. The rest of them fucking done one straight away. Yeah. And then obviously after that, I had like a couple of their boys come to the door for trouble. Two lads, two big guys, to be fair. Bang, bang, knocked them both clean out. And then that's where my reputation started. Did they get a chance to say anything or did you just hit them? No, I just, I just banged them both out. Well, what? I opened the door, bro. I could tell. Yeah. I could knew. just tell straight away. You knew. I knew. I knew by their eyes, bro. Yeah. I could yeah. just tell they'd come here to do me damage. You yeah. know what I mean? So I just did them damage first. Did they uh, come back from that? No. No. No, because the one geezer I busted his jaw and I busted his jaw good. I ate him with a left hand as well. He must have a weak jaw. So I didn't, the one I ate with the right, I didn't yeah. bust his jaw, but the one I ate with the left, I broke his jaw in half. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. So yeah, he didn't come back. No, they didn't want no more after that. Wow. So that settled down then. What was the next situation? The next situation, bro, was my son getting battered, bro. Like, <laughs> battered. Do you know what I mean? He got battered a few times in his life, uh, but he got battered over the past. How old was he when he was getting battered? He was like. <sighs> At this point, I think he was 11. Anthony would have been 11. Yeah. He got battered over the park, do you know what I mean, by some older lads. So I just went over there and wastemanned them all over the place. So did you go like a five or ten year period then without violence? No, 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 no. Okay. No. When I moved in with Tony, yeah, Anthony was nine. Oh, he was nine. Gotcha. He was nine. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? So this shit was happening over that period. Yeah, it, it, all, it all happened. I mean, quite obviously, there was also with me going out and that, yeah, into the pubs around Smevik. If yeah. you're not known around Smevik, yeah. you're in fucking trouble. Yeah. Like, it's funny for me when, you know, trolls say, yeah, for trolls. Yeah. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Aren't we going to come, Smevik? You come, Smevik. You ain't going to make it out alive, you dickhead. <laughs> do you know what I mean, right? Seriously, <laughs> the lads will do you in. Do you know what I yeah, mean, right? Yeah, yeah. So you don't go to another man's manor like that. You're daft. Mm -hmm. And Smevik's a violent place, people. It's not nice. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So my rep cut starting to grow from there. And then when I started drinking around the pubs, because I was by myself, mm. a couple of times I've gone out to the pub, bro, and like some geezers just like whacked me. Thinking that because I'm by myself, oh, that's okay. No, 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 no. I've jumped on him and his fucking mates. Yeah. All over him. Yeah. Because when I, you know, when I switch, it's an instant thing. Mm -hmm. I don't stand in front of somebody. You know, like you get a lot of people, they get angry and they're like, come on in, come on, come on. No, it's not like that. It's like switch, bite, switch, snap. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Once I decide to do it, once my brain decides, no, no, you're going to get hurt, you're getting hurt. The only way anybody can ever stop that situation from getting hurt once they're in it, is if they 
bitch it and cower down because I'm not a bully. So I won't hit somebody who has retreated. I'm not like that, Sean. So if you're like, nah, Danny, nah, 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 then I'll be like, well, fuck off, dickhead. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm like. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. So uh, the gang uh, backs down, but another situation arises. You had a few incidents in pubs. What what was the next major situation? Anthony getting battered. I mean, really battered yeah. by, a, by a man, Sean, that funnily enough hey, looks, looks like you, bro, but with tattoos all over him. Oh my yeah, goodness! I mean, look just like you. Don't look like you yeah. no more because he's got half yeah. of his face missing. But he fucking did look like you. Oh dear, mate. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in the masonette with Tony now. Yeah. yeah Some of the young yeah. lads have come running up to my fucking house. Anthony's mm. friends. Do you know what I mean? Right. Who are older lads now? Yeah. Um, shout out to Flipper. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Right. Yeah. They come up to my says, Danny, you need to come. You need to come. Anthony's been battered. Mm. I jumped in my. It was ever so funny because there was loads of people from Smevik then who kind of knew I was and knew I was coming. Yeah. yeah, so I had a little Citroen AX <laughs> and I went down there about 80 mile now, bro, and handbraked it in the middle of the fucking road. I swear to God, it was mad. Jumped out the fucking door, and my son is sat on, like, you know, a nurse who's off, who's not at work. Yeah, he's sat on a garden on a chair, and I ain't fucking kidding with you, bro. His nose is bust, his lips are bust, his eyes fucking shattered. Do you know what I mean, right? He's got scratches and cuts all over him. So I'm like, what the fuck went on? Do you yeah. know what I mean, right? His mates have told me. Basically, he was walking down the road with them. There was a lad who, who was, whose father this was. Yeah, and he was with all his mates on the front garden. He offered Anthony out. Anthony was a scrapper. So Anthony's gone, yeah, no problem. They're the same age. Yeah. So Anthony battered him. Anthony was 13 at the time. Yeah. So Anthony battered this lad. Then his dad's come out, bruv. Mm. Kicked the shit out of Anthony. Anthony's crawled underneath a van to get away from this bloke. The geezer's grabbed him by his foot, dragged him out and stomped all over his fucking head. Do you know what I mean? So I went to this geezer's door, Sean, yeah? Right, listen to this. What an absolute fucking weasel of a man. I've gone to this geezer's door. His wife is in front of him. He stood behind his wife. I've gone, yo, bro, come out here and fight me, yeah? Or I'm going to do you in your own house. She's gone, you ain't going to do shit. You ain't going to do shit. I went bang over his shoulder, knocked him out, ran in his house, jumped on top of him, bit his fucking face off. He woke up screaming to me, taking his fucking face off. Do you know what I mean? And you deserved every fucking bite. Do you know what I mean, right? And then people don't believe this to this day. They don't believe this to this day. I was obviously known by the police for fighting and stuff around there at this point. Anthony was known because he was a little tote wreck. So they, they was always around me. I was talking about Anthony and stuff. That, you know what I mean? Fucking bringing him back to when he'd done shit wrong. Yeah? They come to my house to arrest me for this, obviously. This gives you one's press charges. So they come to my house to arrest me for this, yeah? I've gone to the door now. I've gone, they've gone, Danny, you know what we're here for? I went, what, for biting that geezer's face off? I went, listen, I said, if he's going to fucking get me done, I went, Anthony, come here. Anthony, come to the door. His face was fucked. I went, tell him I'm going to press charges for that and I'll see him in jail. Yeah. The police must have gone. This was 15 years ago or something. Yeah. The police must have gone back to him now and gone. Danny says he's going to press charges. The geese must have gone, nah. And people to this day don't believe it because they think <clears throat> that the police now, uh, they'll follow everything up. They'll think that's what it was like back in the day. They don't realise them coppers, mate, knew my family. I was always polite with them. I always am with police. So whenever they come in my house, I offer them a cup of tea. Yeah, I'm always polite with police, right? They have a hard fucking job, right? So, yeah, they come round and saw Anthony's face, mate, tears in the fucking eyes. Because they knew my boy. Do you think they wanted to arrest me for that? No, they wanted any way out of it. So once that geezer bottled it and didn't want to press charges, they had the way out. They didn't have to arrest me. And that's why I didn't get arrested. And they didn't even come back to my house. Not yet. All right, so that situation was squashed. And then what happened next? <laughs> right. I'm now... Anthony didn't do anything this time, right? I know Anthony gets mentioned a lot, right? But he was all right. <laughs> he, listen, he was a proper sick lad. You know, understand? He had, like, draw cell bashes imprinted in his body, brother. He was a sick lad. But he was a bit of a fucking naughty bastard. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So I had, like... Five big men. One of them I know from Birmingham, uh, and he's a convicted rapist. And I know he is, right? And I had, and those all steadied out the tits, Sean. They come to my house looking for a quad in it that they thought Anthony had robbed, yeah? Anthony hadn't robbed it. Do you know what I mean, right? He hadn't robbed it. But they says, we, we, we want to check your back garden. Well, I went, oh, I ain't got nothing to hide, bro. So I went, no problem, lads. Go and have a look in the back garden. They've come out now and they've gone, we want to check the house. No, no, that ain't happening. Do you know what I mean, right? I'm in my boxer shorts, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? I've gone, listen, boys, you ain't going in my house. They've gone, Danny. I've gone, nah, nah, Danny, nothing, bro. Take a step back and we'll knock you the fuck out. And at that, they all like semicircled me. 
So I just looked back and I went, Bab, lock the door. Do you know what I mean? In my box of shorts, no shoes on, barefoot. Do you know what I mean? As I went for them, they just all fucked off. <laughs> they just all jumped in the vans and fucked off. And do you know what they did, bro? They went down the road. I was a bouncer at this point. I was a doorman, right? They went down the fucking road to my doorman friend, Ari. Shout out, brother. Respect. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Went down him and asked him to come with some boys to help them take me on. Ari battered him. <laughs> <laughs> He battered him. Phone me the next morning and went, did you have fucking, did you have these lads at your house last night? I was like, yeah. He's like, Danny, kick the shit out of them. Come down here asking me to come and help batter you, bro. I'd saved him on the door about fucking four times. He's not going to help them batter me. Do you know what I mean? Give us a story of you saving him on the door. Well, bro, it's like, you know, there's been like a few situations where he likes women, bro. Likes to drink on the job. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I have literally gone into a situation, right, where... He's about to get glassed, bro. Because of a boyfriend. Yeah, he's about to get glassed. He's about to get it in the back of the head. And I've literally caught the geezer's fucking arm. Do you know what I mean? And I've gone, nah, 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 and pulled him towards me. Yeah. Now, what I used to do when I was a doorman, in my opinion, I used to run the teams on the doors, right? Because I was a ve I drink coffee. I'm very straight-headed on them doors, because you have to be. It's my job to make sure everybody goes home safely. Even the dickheads. If I can talk you out, I'll talk you out. It doesn't have to get violent. Everyone's supposed to go home safely. That's my job. And all the lads that I used to work with, bro, all night, bro, on the dance floor chatting up birds, not doing the fucking job. Do you know what I mean? So the best person always has to be front of house. The best doorman you've got has to be front of house, right? That's me. Because you know the dickheads that are coming in. You know the dealers that are coming in. You can see them. You can sniff them. Now nah, you're not coming in, lads. You stop it there. Because once you let the dickheads in, that's when trouble happens. Do you know what I mean? So you stop it there. But then something happens on the dance floor. And rather than the lads I'm working with be there to sort it out, bro, I've got the manager of the pub coming up to me saying, Danny, there's a fight on the dance floor. I'm working with two of the men. So I'm like, where the fuck are you going? Do you know what I mean? Bro, they're in the toilet getting a fucking blowjob. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I quit. I, I stopped after. I was like, fuck this. I'm doing my job properly, yeah? Getting paid like £70 a night, yeah? And I've got to have my eyes around me everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Fuck this. I'm supposed to have backup. I ain't got no backup. How long did you do it for? And what was the craziest thing you saw? Bro, the craziest thing I saw was to do with sex, bro, to be fair. In the club? In the pub. Do you in know the what pub? Mean? In the fucking pub. In Witherspoons in Black Eve. <laughs> do you know what I mean, right? I've fucking gone in there, yeah? And there's some bird licking out another bird. Do you know what I mean, right? And behind the bird up against the wall, which I didn't even see, was this little tiny geezer licking her ass, bro. Do you know what I mean? And I've walked in, and I swear, it's the one time I've been stumped. So I've just walked in, and I've just, I just opened the door, and I was like, Phew. and I just walked straight back out. I didn't even know what to fucking say, bro. Do you know what I mean? He come out, bro, with this geezer, he had a fucking smile from ear to ear on his face. I'm not surprised. Do you know what I mean? The shit that, mate, the shit that I've done on drugs, though, bro, I swear to God, I've took some serious drugs I have, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Some serious class A's. I've took everything. Yeah. Everything. I've took everything because I wanted to experience it. Yeah. And some of them I don't like, some of them I love. You know what I mean? And what was your behaviour like on the drugs? Bro, I'm always happy. Yeah. If I lose it, I lose it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. But other than that, I'm always happy. So no yeah. matter what I'm taking, no matter what I'm doing, I'm always like this. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. always like this. Like, I, like, obviously I have my ups when I'm really up and I have my down bits where I'm a bit more fucking loony and that. Do you know what I mean? But genuinely... I'm kind of like I am right now in front of you. The yeah. drugs don't change that. What was the most violent thing that happened when you were a bouncer? The most violent thing that happened when I was a bouncer was... The most violent thing that happened when I was a bouncer was me kicking two lads out, yeah, because they've been kicking off, and then the other lad sticking a bottle in the other lad's neck. Sticking a bottle into his, his neck? His mate as well. It was his mate? His mate as well. Off his head on fucking ecstasy, bro, and he stuck that fucking bottle clean. On ecstasy? Head. On ecstasy, yeah. Off his fucking tits. <sighs> must have been something I funny. I kicked him out because there was peddling ecstasy in the pub. Must have been something uh, funny in the ecstasy, like a toxic substance. Bro, fuck knows. But there was, there was kicking off in the pub, though, bro. There was kicking off in the pub. But I think they had ecstasy. I think they had MDMA, Coke, fucking all sorts. They was on fucking yeah, all sorts. Up yeah. as down as left, right. Yeah. They look like they've been sessioning for days. Right. And I see that quite a lot because believe me, in Birmingham, bro, there's some sessioners and I know them all. So, <laughs> so they were on a cocktail. And he got in the neck and then the blood just... Mate, so listen, I just it was away from the door, bro. It was on the streets. So it was just a case of manager, phone ambulance, phone police, police. Yeah. It was there quick, bro. It yeah. was there in about two minutes. Was there any time at a bouncer when like, a group ganged up against you? No. No. No, because it was... 
the way I used to put people out, if I had to put them out, if it had to get a little bit physical, yeah, I used to do it in a certain way, mm -hmm. and it must have made them realise, bro. Yeah. My dad taught me because my dad used to be a doorman in it. So when I was going to work the doors, my dad taught me a few things before I started working the doors. Yeah. And basically, when you're on the door, like if somebody's taking the piss in front of you mm. and they're not calming down, they won't listen to you. I used to literally just bang, grab them by the back of the neck and pull the face into my chest and bury them in my chest and then talk to them in the ear in a very nasty way, bro. Right. And that used to solve the problem because really? they used to not be able to breathe. They used to listen. You'd think somebody would struggle. Yeah. Mm. It's like whiplash, it's a whiplash effect because it's not like just grab them and pull them. Nice. Yeah. Come here. Do you know what I mean? Right? And yeah. that that there, especially when I mean my arms aren't that big now, bro, but trust yeah. me, when I was on the doors, I had some fucking whop. I was a big man. Do you know what I mean? Right? So that the force of that when you're drunk as well. Yeah. They just listen straight away. That's interesting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What other techniques did he teach you? Um, how to take a man out clean, bro. Do you what? know what I mean? Just take him out, just kneecap a man clean. Yeah. He said, Danny, your kneecap, a man is done. You mean put him down? No, I mean stomp on his kneecap, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, can't get back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stomp on his kneecap. Yeah. He says, and then he will be done. He will not get back up. Yeah, yeah. That's something I've, I've used in a few fights, to be fair. And he has been done. And he ain't got back up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was that during your bouncing days? Nah, just street fights, bro. I've street had quite fights. a lot of street fights, to be fair. So what, what was the street fight then, whereby you had to kneecap somebody? Uh, well, that was outside Sainsbury's in Oldbury. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, I've come outside Sainsbury's now. I had some weed on me. Do you know what I mean? Right, I'm smoking a spliff. Geezer's come up to me and he's gone, give me a spliff. I've gone, I didn't have much left to be honest. Normally I would. Normally yeah. I actually would. Normally I'd go, yeah, here you are, mate. But yeah. I didn't. I only had a little few spliffs left, right? I ain't giving you my last weed, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I've turned around, I've gone, nah. Do you know what I mean? And he's just gone to whack me, bro. So I just stepped back, smashed him in the knee, and bossed his knee. Do you know what I mean? Fell to the ground. I was going to stomp him, yeah. but I didn't stomp him. I just, I knew his, his leg had gone, bro. I could see it was a funny angle and everything. I knew I'd done him in. So yeah. I just left him. So there's a situation with the guns then. How did it get to the guns level? Fucking hell. Well, first time. So guns, few times. First time in Answorth. Yeah. Somebody had asked me if I could get them an ounce of weed. Yeah. I can always get weed because I smoke bare fucking weed. So I went to one of my mates. I was like, yo, can you do me an ounce? He was like, yeah. I went to drop it off in Answorth. Parked there in my fucking car. Right. Car spun up in me, bro. Geezer's come out with a fucking shotgun. Do you know what I mean? Pointed it at me, get out the car, get out the car. Yeah, I got out the fucking car, all right? Whacked him, took the shotgun off him and beat the fuck out the car with that shotgun. And they drove off. Do you know what I mean? They literally spot off as fast as they could, bro. Because I didn't, I didn't try and shoot the shotgun. I turned it round, bro, and just started smashing the fucking car. Get out the fucking car! Get out the fucking car! Do you know what I mean? Right, now they was gone. Why did they try and pull a fast one on you? I don't know. I think I was set up, bro. Or, or they just saw me park there. It's Hansworth, bro. Hansworth's... Answorth's deadly, bro. It's a deadly place, Answorth, bro. Do you know what I mean? What's more deadly, Smevik or I'd Answorth? say Answorth, bro. Really? Yeah. Smevik's deadly, but Answorth's deadly, bro. Is it? Answorth's a fucking... Bro, it's like Beirut, bro. These are all around Birmingham, Wolverhampton area, are they? Birmingham, these are. Bro. Birmingham. These are all Birmingham. Rough, mate. Seriously. What, what was the next situation with a gun? He was there. <laughs> he was there. My nephew was there. Just for people watching, his son and his nephews in, just watching the podcast. Yeah, 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 basically, I'm sat in my house now and some of the lads that I know from the area have come and knocked on my door. Lewis, Connor, shout out. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah, Lewis has come to my door and he's knocked on the door and he's going, Dan, I've got some lads from Birmingham coming down to fight me one-on-one. -on -one. Will you just come over and make sure it's a one-on-one? -on -one? I've gone, yeah, well, I'm not getting involved. Like, if you get beat, you get beat, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? But I'll make sure it's a one-on-one -on -one for you, not a problem. I'll come over and I'll just, like, spectate kind of thing. So over the road from my house, is, it used to be a pub. It's not no more. It's like apartments now. Do you know what I mean, right? So it's just over the road from my house this is happening, where I live now, yeah, right? I've literally walked over with him, Lewis, Connor, some of their mates, right? Me and Aiden, right, because he's my nephew, we've gone and sat away from them lads on, a, on like a, a set of steps. Do you know what I mean, right? We're about 20 feet away from Lewis and that. And obviously, if one geezer gets out of the car to fight Lewis, his mates are going to back off and they're going to have a fight on this car park, Yeah. Bro, this car's pulled up. Nice car as well. Well, two really nice cars, to be fair. Pulled up, yeah. Window's gone down. Out comes a nine mil, bro. Straight out the window. Pointed it at Lewis and that. They shit the fucking pants and ran, yeah? Pointed it at me and Aiden. I've just ran at them. I swear. And what they got was, what they got was, point a gun at me. I'm going to take it off, yeah? And fucking kill you with it. And then I rushed the car. Do you know what I mean? And then they got, they got off and I chased them down the fucking road, bro. 
I chased them down the road, seriously. They weren't even hanging out the window with that gun no more, but I chased them down the road. If I would have got hold of that geezer, I would have tore him to bits, bro. I would have put that gun up his ass and shot it. Do you know what I mean? I'm telling you now, fucking point a gun at me. Wow. Yeah, and he was there. He, he watched that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Was that the last time with a, anything happened with a gun or was there more? Yeah, last time. Shit happened with knives and that, though. Go on, what happened with knives? Fuck me, gone to Saltburn with my dad, near the end of his life. It was the last holiday he had. Took him finished fishing in Saltburn and I went surfing with, the, with my son and that. Um, we've come back from Saltburn and there's a shop called the Spa right by my house. So I live two doors up, say, from Spa, but there's some space in between, yeah? My next door neighbour had gone on holiday. He's got like a 600 like ninja in his back garden, yeah? And he's paid for extra land so he can build like his own fence around it and that, yeah? I've come back from Saltburn with my dad, gone to the shop to get some king size rizzers to roll a spliff, yeah? As I'm walking to the shop, I'm walking back now, and there's about six or seven 15 year old lads trying to rip this fence down to get to this bike. My next door neighbour's house, bro. So I've just walked up and I've gone, yo, boys, listen, if you want to fuck about like that, go to your own area. Don't do it to my next door neighbour. You ain't taking his fucking bike now, fuck off. Do you know what I mean, right? At this, some big, I found out later, I think he's like 18, but I'm telling you, bro, he's a big black guy. Do you know what I mean? Looked like a grown man, like six foot four, way bigger than me, bro. Has walked forward and he's gone, yo, what you're fucking my boys for? I've looked at him, I've gone, they're fucking kids. What do you mean they're your boys, you dickhead? Right? He's gone, you want some? So I've just stepped back into fighting stance. I'm going, yeah, come on then, you big dickhead. Do you know what I mean? And as I've gone like that, bro, this is right outside my house. He's backed out to a fucking kitchen knife that big. Big mistake. Big mistake, bro. I'm right outside my house. I, just, I swear to God, I looked at him. My exact words was, right? The lads around the area were gassy. It's funny. I've looked at him, I've gone, you think that's a fucking knife? I'll show you a knife. Now, I have medieval weaponry in my house, bro. Right? So I've come out of here now with a cold rolled steel samurai sword, bro. My man's fucking gone. My son, Jins, has chased him down the field, pinned him down. My ginger, ginger just finished work. Pulled out a Stanley out of his pocket, flicked the Stanley up, put it to his throat, bro. Yeah, you will fuck my dad. I'll cut your fucking... And that was it. Never come back again. Never been back around the area. You think that's a knife? <laughs> <laughs> Mate. Oh man, I got the giggles. Okay, so yeah, one. so yeah, that's 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 once of a knife. <laughs> I've had a cut, I've had some of my, I've had lads surround what me with fucking, I've had lads surround me with house, <laughs> house bricks, baseball bats, like seven lads. He watched this as well, don't you, mate? They've come up from the fucking fair, yeah. Loads of lads not from the area. They've come from the fair, bro. They've fucking come outside my house with hammers and everything, yeah. Rah, rah, rah. Mate, I've gone out with a seven iron and a three wood. Yeah, right? And as I've gone out, they surrounded me. And this is exactly what it was like. I'm not joking, I swear to God. I've, I've got this golf club like this, yeah? And I'm like, come then! Who's first? I'm gonna fucking kill ya! Who's first? The dumb one? <laughs> <laughs> swear to God, bro. <laughs> Holy shit, man, this is intense. <laughs> <laughs> it's the voice, you got a very powerful voice. Yeah, I have, yeah. Like in the animal kingdom, you know, like the barks and, the, and the, the noises animals make. On an animalistic level, your voice is very powerful, very intimidating. When you did that demo then, I, I imagine yeah. people would be, be like, they just have this reaction, wouldn't they, in their fucking minds? Like, it's the aura, I think, bro. I've explained this. Yeah. Like, I mainly bring a good aura to a situation now, <laughs> right? But if it's a violent situation, like I go deep. Yeah. So I think the aura that I emit causes fear. Yeah. And the yeah. stumble. And I only need you to stumble for a second, mate, because my hands are rapid. Yeah. They are faster than you would ever even expect from a geezer of my size and a geezer of my age. Oh, believe me, they are fucking rapid. So you pause for one split second. That's enough for me to smash your face in. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Any more along those lines? Um, well, obviously, what happened in Liverpool, bro. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. was on the fucking stag night. Do you know what I mean? When I got arrested, I got arrested. Go on, Come what? to Liverpool for the first time. And do you know something? I met some lovely Liverpoolians that night, but also I met one cunt. Do you know what I mean? Right, I swear. So, so where were you? What, what, what was happening? Set the scene a bit. We come on a stag night, 30 of us from Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. I was MDMA down my face, to be fair. Right. And um, we went to, I don't, I can't remember what the name of the club is, but it's downstairs. It's underground, this club. Yeah. It's a downstairs club. You have to walk down. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone in now. My mates were getting a little bit moody because they've been drinking some serious liquor. So I've moseyed on off, bro, by myself onto the dance floor. Yeah. Started raving now. And these two beautiful girls started raving with me. Mm -hmm. 
I just, I wasn't trying nothing on. I'm married, bro. I wasn't even interested, but I'm just having a laugh of them, just having yeah, a rave. Yeah, yeah. Two geese have come up, bro, and I thought, oh, fuck me. This is going to be true name. Nah, bro. Yo, mate, that's our missus, isn't that? I went, yo, I ain't trying anything, lads. I'm just having a dance and that. It was yeah. like, we know, we know, mate. Come over to our table. Went over to our table, so I was yeah, just yeah. fucking coke and everything, bro. I was fucking smashed out of my tits. I was wrecked. Do you know what I mean, right? One of my mates has come through the club and yo, yo, one of the boys is getting it, man. So I've come through the club to the stairs, and there's a bouncer giving it one of my mates. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Punched him a few times in the face. I've kind of, I've kind of gone like that in between the bouncer, yeah, to just stop it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I got Judas. That's where that scarf is down. By another bouncer. By a bouncer. Yeah. He Judas me. So I turned around and knocked him clean the fuck out. Yeah. And then fucking jumped on him. But I had like, I'd gone out in a shirt and tie and waistcoat and all that kind of shit. Mm. Yeah. Right. I got, bruv, I got yanked back. Nearly broke my neck by my tie. Like yanked back with such force, right? Yeah. Yeah. That I, it nearly broke my neck. I've turned around, gone like that. He was a copper. Ooh. So I've just gone, poof, I've just stopped. I always do it, bro. I don't fight coppers. Yeah. Right? So I just stopped. And yeah. he went, yo, come and talk to me. So I went to speak to him, right? And I'm saying, look, mate, look at my fuck. My face was split to the bone. Yeah. 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 I've gone, look, mate, look at my fucking face. Do you know what I mean? He's gone, yeah, yeah, but it looks like you start. I went, I ain't seen start nothing, mate. Mm. I says, I was trying to get somebody out of there. And then my man just Judas me because he literally hit me from here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, right? And then that geezer's come to the top of the fucking stairs of it and he's gone, it was him, it was him. Well, then I got angry. I went, yo, what do you mean? This is fucking him. I says, go and arrest him, bro. And because I got angry, mm. they arrested me and put me in the fucking van. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Then took me to the police cells. And to be honest, I got a bit of grief, to be fair. There was like, you Birmingham lads think you can come fucking up here causing trouble. I was like, from it wasn't the police. Even, yeah, I said, it yeah. wasn't even like that, mate. I said, it wasn't like that. I says, when you check them cameras, you're going to have to let me out of here with an apology. Yeah. Knowing that I've just defended myself. Do you yeah. know what I mean, right? And obviously, lo and behold, when they went and checked the cameras, mm -hmm. they had to let me out. So no charges, Sean, right? No charges, but still a 90 pound fucking fine. Yeah. And do you know when they let me out? I said, where's the news train station? Mm -hmm. He went about five miles that way. I went, well, have you finished work? He went, yeah. I said, can you give me a lift, bro? I'm not, I'm not from Liverpool. He went, no, no, walk. Yeah. I was like, you fucking prick. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I nearly got arrested as well when I got back to Birmingham. Come back to fucking Birmingham, bro. I've got like... You know, like, my shit was ripped in it. So, do you know when you mm. get, like, them grey fucking woolly top things that they give you, them jumper things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've got one of them on, bro, yeah? I'm mean, fucking come out of the police station and my fucking face all fucking stitched up and shit. I'm mm. looking like crap. Mm -hmm. I've just fucking had a shit night. I needed a piss. So I've gone to have a piss. Fucking coppers have only blue lighted me, bro. Come behind me. I'm talking about arresting me in that for having oh, a piss. Oh, having a piss in public. For having a piss in public. Bro. That's weak, isn't it? And I was just like, I went, I, I, you know what I said to him? I looked at my mind, I've had a very, very, very rough night, yeah? Leave me the fuck alone, man. Do you know what I mean? And the woman just looked at me and went, okay, just don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked home. Wow, wow. You had some wild experiences on mushrooms. Ah, oh, fucking yeah, bro. What I pick them like? myself. Yeah. Pick them myself every year. Yeah. Liberty caps. You know what they are. You know what they are? <laughs> no, no. 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 Liberty caps, bro. You can pick them on any field. Yeah. Usually, round about Halloween time. Yeah. And bros are about this big. They have like a purple underside and a little white nipple on the top of them. Mm. And that nipple is the LSD. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so the first time I took mushrooms was with some friends who had took them before. I'd never took them. Yeah. Shout out to Pico and Garvey. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Pico lives in Spain. He's one of my best friends. Yes, Pick. Do you know what I mean? Right. <sighs> so I've took, the, I've took 50. Yeah? yeah. They've all took 50. I'm big in it. So it took me a while to come up. So they're, you know how drugs are. So they've come up really quick and I haven't come up. Mm -hmm. So I thought, fuck this, so I've done another 50. Oh. Do you know what I mean, right? And then I come up in a wanna. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And I swear to God, so I'm not joking with you, I come up, yeah? And I was laid on the settee mm. and I was looking at myself from above, bruv. Work that fucker out. <laughs> and Pico was going down. I'm saying to Pico, I'm saying, Pico, I must be dead. I'm saying, Pico, I must be dead. I must be dead. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the top of your head, Pick. And he's like, Danny, Danny, you're talking to me. Your mouth's moving. I'm like, well, how the fuck's my mouth moving, bro? Well, I'm fucking still at the top of your head. He had to talk me back into my own body. You astral projected. Probably, yeah. Well, <laughs> to this day, because I know a lot of bit. I, I'm thinking, yeah. did I actually astral project? Or yeah. did I take myself that close to death? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I've always thought to this day. Did I actually take myself really close there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And then that, listen to this, bro. So we, we're tripping now. He's talking me back into my body and I've got used <laughs> to it, right? When you take mushrooms, you get like a mad feeling from your toes all the way up to your head. It's, yeah. It is quite orgasmic, to be fair. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, right? And then you've got the trippy shit as well. And whenever that feeling comes, you know you're going to trip your bollocks off. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Garn's gone to the toilet now, my mate. Shout out, Garn, brother. Love ya. Do you know what I mean, right? Garn has gone to the toilet and he's, he's shouted us all in. He's gone, yo, come here quick. Do you know what I mean, right? I've gone into the toilet. I've gone, what, bro? What now? If I 
say, gave you mushrooms mm -hmm. and something happened for me in this room and I told you what happened for me is going to happen for you. Mm -hmm. That's how mushrooms work. Power of persuasion, bro. I'm not even joking with you. So if an octopus comes out of your ceiling, mm -hmm. yeah, and I say, yo, there's a fucking pink octopus there, you're going to go, fucking, that's huge, Danny. And yeah. you're going to see the pink octopus. That's how it works, bro, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's called us to the toilet, bro. He's having a piss, right? Me, my missus, right? Garvey's missus, Garvey and Pico, right? We've all gone to the toilet and <laughs> he's stood there having a piss like this. We're all standing over his shoulder and I'm going, what, what? And he's like, watch my piss, man. It's turned into a waterfall. It's got unicorns on it. As soon as he said that, right, his piss hit the pan and it went up into a fucking multicolored waterfall. And there's little unicorns <laughs> running over the top of it, bro. So we're stood there watching him piss for ages, right? And when he stopped pissing, I ran out, I'm getting water. I'm like, bro, drink, drink some water. You need to piss again. Piss, piss, bro. You know what I mean? I swear to God, man. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. Nuts, bro. Nuts. Last time I took him with my wife, my wife was paralyzed for an hour. Yeah. Didn't know. Yeah. Right? And my mate, Tommy, yeah, was. He kept coming into the front room like this, man. He kept putting his hands around the door. Mm. And my missus said, every time he did that, Danny, I couldn't tell you because I was paralysed. Mm. He turned into the devil, right? Yeah. And she couldn't tell me. She went, I couldn't even reach out and touch your leg. Yeah, so yeah. for an hour, she went through a dark time. But for me, bro, I brought like a... I always like to put nature in the room when I'm doing mm. this. So I've got a bit of nature. So I've got this flower pot outside, bro. I brought the flower pot in and I put it on the front room. Yeah. After a while now, bro, when I'm tripping my box off, I looked at this flower pot. And I swear to God, bro, I zoomed into the flower pot and I was in a chain gang. I was chained up and I had many masks with spears leading me through the fucking Amazon, bro. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck's going on? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and every yeah. time I tried to snap myself out of it, I just couldn't. Mm. I thought, is this where I'm living now? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mental, mate. Yeah, Mushrooms yeah. are fucking nuts. Do you know what I mean? I, when I was on some mystery uh, hallucinogenics, wild man used to always turn into the devil. <laughs> oh, fucking and, it, and he'd wind me up, he'd be like, I am the devil. Fucking <sighs> hell, man. Look, just looking at me. Imagine that on trips, mate. Your yeah, fucking mind's gonna go, yeah, woo! Yeah. He actually, um, he had a stroke. He was up for like a couple of weeks smoking crack and meth, and he had a stroke. So one side of his face was paralyzed. So he, had, he could only put the pipe in the other side of his face. And he'd take a huge breath and he'd stand up and be like, People used to think I looked scary. Just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he looked like a fucking nutter. Oh, my God. <laughs> I bet he looked like an absolute nutter. Fucking insanity. All right, so um, you actually got to the point where you fought people for money? Like, was that street fighting? No, or? no, no, no. No? So no. wanting to fight people for money? No, that's... No, 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 no. That bro. didn't happen. That's now. Oh, that's now? <laughs> that's now, bro. That's you know now. I mean? So, you know this YouTube boxing shit? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, well... I want to get out of Birmingham. Yeah. Right? I've had enough of this shithole. Do you know what I mean? Right? Yeah, I want to get out of yeah, Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. It's just getting worse and worse, Sean. Before I fucking end up doing something and get me locked up again. I right. want to get out of Birmingham. Mm. Right? My missus has said to me, Danny, put 50 grand on the table and I'll move. Right? Yeah? Because there'll be no heartache, no hardness through moving with 50G. Yeah. yeah. So that's the price she's put on. Yeah? Right. So I've been putting over my YouTube, like, you know what I mean? I will fight basically anybody in the ring, my body weight, for 50 grand. I want the 50 grand before the fight because you ain't scamming me, motherfucker, because I would kill you. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. yeah, so I want the 50 grand before the fight, then I'll sign the contract and I'll fight anybody, mm -hmm. my body weight, yeah, in the ring for 50 grand. Yeah. It's that simple. Because mm -hmm. it's not no ego thing. It's not because I want to get in there and punch somebody's head in mm -hmm. or prove a point. It's got nothing to do with that. I want to get out of fucking Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. And I can't see a way out than getting a big, large sum of money in a wanna because my missus ain't having it, mate. <clears throat> yeah. So I used to watch like the Octagon and those early episodes of that fighting. Yeah. And you see all the different fighting styles yeah. coming together. So are you do you have like uh training in various fighting styles that you would utilize in the self -taught, situation? Self-taught, mate. Self-taught. Totally self-taught. Yeah. So is your confidence such then that if you went up against like a seasoned person in a certain you know, um, martial art, you, you still feel like with your... Well, for me, obviously, no. To be honest with you, like kickboxing, stuff like that, Muay yeah. Thai, I'd need too much tutelage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boxing, anybody that mm -hmm. I get in the ring with, mm -hmm. after 10 weeks training, because obviously I want training first, yeah. you know what I mean? So after 10 weeks training, I'll give them a fight. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. I don't fucking know. Yeah, But yeah. I don't fucking care. Yeah. If I get knocked out, my brother will be in my corner, mate. Yeah. So if I get knocked out on the floor, the first thing I'm going to do is, bro, I've still got my 50 grand. <laughs> He's going to be like, yeah, I'm like, sweet. <laughs> do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck. It's not mm. about that for me. It's about giving me an opportunity to get the fuck somewhere better than where I live. Yeah. And have you put this out there already? And is yeah, anyone... yeah. I've been offering Jake Paul out, mate, for fucking months. Yeah. 
I mean, I know my fans have got it to you. Yeah, and you're just bottling it, are you? You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, what made you become a YouTuber? Um, the, 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 the reason I first did it, yeah, was I was thinking about it for years because when I lost Anthony, right, I've got pictures of my son. Yeah, I've got one video of him for about a minute where he was at a party. I've yeah. got another footage, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, looking at a picture is one thing. Mm. But seeing the animated version, the, f the the person as there was, is something totally different. Yeah. So when I lost Anthony, I thought, I don't want my kids to go through this shit. Yeah. I want them, basically. So a few years after I lost Anthony, I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and then I just did it. Yeah. Mm. But then, obviously, the, like I was going to I was probably not even going to do about 50 videos, bro. But then an audience started. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it started off as just do 50 videos for the kids so that when they get older, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they, they want to see their dad as he was in his prime, do you know what I mean? Right? They can go on there and cheer him up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then it escalated. I mean, now they've got fucking a thousand videos that they can look at the dad. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. So it escalated. And then once I started getting a YouTube audience, bro, it was kind of like, well, I'll carry it on. I'll do what I enjoy doing. Yeah. And see if people enjoy watching it. Yeah. And they do. One of your most moving videos was when you were talking about the loss of your dad. Are you okay to talk about that a little bit? Or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You might get a bit emotional, but yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because um, he was going to be in a video with you, wasn't he? The next day, bro. Yeah. The very next day. The had, had, very he, next had he been day. in any videos prior to that? No. Okay. Because he, he so he'd had his cancer. Mm. He got rid of his cancer. Um, and he started training again. But because when he had the cancer, they took one half of his lung out. You yeah. can imagine how hard it is to breathe, Sean. Right? So my dad didn't want to come on camera until he had that under control. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So he yeah. trained for a, a bit while I was doing YouTube videos. And then when he was ready, he, he come to, because I used to go to the gym with him every day. Yeah. Train with him. And then when he was tired, he'd go and speak to the gym owners, have a cup of tea. And I'd carry on training kind of thing. That was the routine that we was in. Um, and then on the day before, my dad, well, on the Thursday, my dad said to me on that night in my house, he went, son, I'll come in a YouTube video with you, yeah, but I want to go and do the workout first just to make sure I can get through the workout and it's going to be fine on video. And I was like, no problem, dad. So we went on the Friday, bro, to do the workout. We did the workout. He was fine. He was so excited. He come back to my house. Do you know what I mean? We watched a film together. Last words I said to him, you know, because he'd done a workout with me that day and he'd done a full workout, what I would consider a full workout. My last words to him, bro, was, I'm proud of you, dad. That was the last thing I said to him when I left my house, man. I yeah. gave him a love and a kiss, and I was like, Dad, I'm proud of you. You fucking smashed it. Do you know what I mean? You did smash it. And then I got a phone call the next morning, bro. Um, he, was, he was dead. Mm. He was fucking dead. How old was he? He was 69. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, my dad's in his 70s now. I just, even the thought, you know, it's like horrible, isn't it's it? It's fucking horrible, man. If you're close, yeah. if you're close to your parents, it's... When my dad, bro, started taking steroids without his knowing. Yeah. That's what, he was a massive heart attack that done him. Right. And we only knew because we went on to his, you know, like his Google, like his, mm -hmm. his email to yeah. see if he needed people to pay or whatever. Yeah. And we saw 500 Winstrol order on there, bro. And yeah. we couldn't find the Winstrol in the house. So he must have been popping him like candy, thinking mm. he was still a young man. And yeah. And he fucking killed him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I lost Wildman last year and I was really sad towards the end of the year. I was really down. I could see it in my videos. Then kind of at his funeral, um, me and his cousin who's, who's coming in today, actually, we, we had a good cry. But uh, after that, I felt his strength come into me and say, look, you know, be strong. And, yeah. and um, my life, my psychology's changed since then. My point is, what was your psychological recovery then from... From your dad and the If you look at the videos after that, uh, yeah. you can see I'm in a dark place, bro, because the nasty yeah. videos I'm doing, you can see them, bro. I'm mm -hmm. just doing some horrendously violent fucking videos, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, right? Seriously, talking about biting. I'm, I'm biting people's faces off in my mind in the videos. You can see it. Yeah. I'm shadow boxing and I'm literally killing somebody on camera, but they're not there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's a dark place to be. I was there for a bit, bro. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of like, when my dad was alive, right? My dad loved me, so we were best friends in that, yeah. And he always said to me that, you know, you'd be so much greater if you got rid of that side of you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I would love in my lifetime, son, for you to get rid of that. 
So I went through my dark spot and then I sat and I thought about it. And I thought, you know something? He's gone now, yeah, but I can try and make this work. I can try and do this. And that's that's what I've done, bro. Yeah. And that's why now I am a different person. Definitely. For the better, I think, not for the worse. So I have more compassion and understanding is not a bad thing. And he lives on in you and your son. And he lives on yeah. in all of us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I speak to him all the time, bro. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah, wild man. Um, strikes my enemies down from above. He protected me for a long uh, period of my life, but now he still protects me from above. The wild man in the sky. It's nice to have that. It's yeah. Nice to, it's nice to have that kind of thought, bro. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. So you managed to knock yourself out playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How does that work? Right, well, dartboard. Yeah. Kitchen. Yeah. Throw point is underneath a door frame. That's yeah. the exact way we throw from. Yeah. I got quite good at darts because it was in my kitchen, isn't it? <laughs> so, like, but you know, 180s don't come very often, bro. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, treble 20. <laughs> treble 20. <laughs> I ate the fucking wire, right? And yeah. I went, fuck! And I jumped in the air and the top of my head hit the door frame. And the next thing I know, I'm clunked against the back door <laughs> like that. My mate's all giving, Daddy, you all right? You all right? And my missus is fucking pissing herself in the corner <laughs> of the kitchen. Tony's laughing her tits off, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what happened? And Tony went, you just knocked yourself the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how I knocked myself out playing darts. How many times have you been knocked out in your life? Uh, well, the geezer in prison put me to sleep. I've knocked myself out. For, I've knocked myself out for anger as well. With anger? Yeah, yeah. I've literally How? passed out for anger. Just <sighs> holding it in, not releasing it. Yeah, just because like, it was somebody I didn't want to release. What, it you're with. almost gonna bust a blood vessel. Or I something. did. No, I did, brother. Just you did bust out. the blood vessel. I, I just knocked out. Yeah, I just knocked out on so the spot. So angry. Bro. So angry. I just knocked yeah. out. My body went no, 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 and I just blacked out at the top of the stairs. I, I won't ask you to demonstrate that one then. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you went on Tunisia for a holiday. And a situation arose with a piece of glass? Tu yeah, Tunis, yeah, fucking brother, it was funny as fuck. So basically, I, I, my missus and my dad, yeah, mm. wrote to me what happened to my dad on that holiday, bro. So my missus and my dad and my brother and his missus, Kim, yeah, I love you, bro, right? Basically, we went to Tunisia. I went a week after everyone mm. because I was working, so I could only get a week off. And they went for two weeks, but I could only get a week off. So I went a week after. My brother had been telling everybody in that bar that I was huge. He'd been saying, wait till my brother gets here. Wait till my brother gets here. He's fucking massive. He's fucking massive. Yeah, right. If I showed you some pictures from them and move with lipstick on, bro, I did a stage dance for them dressed as a fucking woman. Do you know what I mean? Because they were short on staff. It was sick. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. But I got there the first night. This was the first fucking night. That's the sky. It's that scar on my wrist. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I got there the first night, yeah. I'm sat there drinking. And the lads who worked there, the Tunisian lads, it was all in good jest, but it was the way it happened. They went, they sat next to me and it was just like nudging me. And it was going, you ain't that fucking big. Nudging me, you ain't that big. And I went, yeah, I'm talking to They would do it for about 20 minutes. And I went, you know something, you two. You know, if you carry on, you go in that fucking pool, yeah, fully dressed. It was like, you won't do that. I was like, I fucking will. It was like, you won't do that. And I stood up and as I stood up, they ran. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they ran out the bar doors and the bar doors was full glass pane doors. They opened the doors and ran out. I ran through the glass. Straight through the fucking glass, bro. I threw them both in the pool. But then I come back to the bar, bro, and I was like, yo, bro, my fucking arms are killing me, bro. Let me have a look. I shit you not, bro. I had a piece of glass like that sticking out my wrist. It was deep as well, yeah. My brother's just gone. Like that, yeah. Took me to the bar, vodka, all over my wrist, yeah. And said to the bar, yo, you got any you got any needle and cotton? The bar geezer was like, I got a knitting needle. So I was like, fuck it, give me the knitting needle. I was like, fuck off, Simon. You can't fucking put a needle needle in my heart. You know what I mean? Next day, bro, I didn't, I didn't have it stitched up or anything. I left yeah, it open. Yeah. The next day I went and got in the sea, bro. That was fucking hell, bro. The fucking pain was unreal. I took it. I took it like a beast. Yeah. My dad, the holiday, though, I arrived to Tunisia. My dad's strapped up, bro. He's got belts strapping him up and everything. I'm like, what the fuck? Simon sat down me on the night and he's going, yo. I'm going, yo, what's happened to dad, bro? He's gone, yo, Dan, he's smashed his shoulder. He's broke all his ribs on one side of his body. I'm like, well, why has he got it strapped up with a belt? He's like, because he won't pay the three grand. You know what I mean? He's a fucking stingy bastard, you know? He's like, yeah, he paying it. He said, so I'll strap it up my fucking self. So we're strapping him up with belts, right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, how did that happen? He was like, Dan, we rented some fucking peds, right? Yeah. The front brake was metal on metal. I told him this. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I says, only use the back brake. Yeah. He's gone. There's a train like a tram that goes around the tracks. He said, Dad's gone at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Hit the fucking front brake, gone straight over the underbar and hit the train. You know what I mean? 
I was like, what? He was like, yeah, man. <laughs> you know I, mean? I was like, shit. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Fucking hell. And he took that pain all holiday. He took yeah. that all holiday. Fucking wow. bless him. Do you know what I mean? My God. So what is the happiest, proudest moments of your life? Uh, the happiest moments of my life is yeah. wedding, bro. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. My children were there. Him, his sister, Liam. Obviously, Anthony wasn't there because he was gone by this point. Do you know what I mean? But my wedding, bro. And where was that at? And how did that happen? What was it like? It was Turkey. In Turkey? In Turkey. Oh, I love Turkey. Turkey yeah. Cleopatra's Beach. Yeah. Sidé. So, Turtle Bay. Mm. Cost nearly 16 fucking grand. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Shit, I was working for that one for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was mad. Listen, wherever I fucking go with my mates, you cannot take Smevic anywhere, bro. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I had I had twelve lads from Smavic come on this holiday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all the boys from yeah. Smavic, all of you. I love you all. Miles, Dennis, Luke, Adam, Booyah, all of you. Dave, fucking Flipper, Pico, love you all. And come to the fucking wedding, bro. So we got to this hotel. It was called Paloma Prisia. I think now it's called Sentido Prisia. Yeah, yeah. five star luxury hotel, bro. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's loads of foreigners there, Germans, French, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Right. We arrived at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Free bar, twenty four hours a day. Yeah, the lads from Smevic have never experienced nothing like this in their life. Yeah, yeah. So they sat there for five hours drinking Zambuca after Zambuca after Zambuca after Zambuca. I come down at half past seven in the morning, bro. Yeah. Been there less than 24 hours. Got called up to the fucking office to the manager, right? I'm like, I've been asleep. Like, you know what I mean? What's going on? Yo, you need to go and sort your mates out. So I've gone down, they sat at a table, bro. They've literally drunk about 50 of these fucking things each. Yeah, throwing glasses around and that in a five star luxury hotel, bro. Oh my God. Do you know what I mean? Three yeah. nights in, three nights yeah. in, two of the lads who were sharing a room, right? They've, they've got into a ruckus. So the front door's got smashed off his fucking hinges and yeah. one of them's threw the other one over the balcony. I went to Sidé, right? Went to Sidé to a, night, to a nightclub in Sidé, right? Yeah. Uh, for my stag night, yeah? Gone to this, listen, Luke. Yeah, Luke, yeah. I'm going to tell him about this now, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah? <laughs> Luke's, one of, Luke's like my brother, but I'm, I'm telling him about this now, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? So basically, we've gone to this nightclub we're all having a good time. I'm dancing. Do you know what I mean, right? Pico, my mate, literally, I'm not, no gas. I couldn't find him for about 15, 20 minutes, right? And I was like, where is he? So I'm walking around the club, asking everybody where he is. Somebody turned around to me and went, Danny's underneath that table. I went, what the fuck's he doing underneath a table, man? So I've gone, I've looked underneath the table, picks underneath the table, licking a bird out. <laughs> I swear, go on, lad. Do you know what I mean, right? So I've just gone, fuck no, you enjoying yourself there, Pick, and just carried on my night, yeah? yeah? But Luke, Luke, Luke's getting pissed and he's getting a bit aggroed and it's because he wants to go with this bird, right? This, this blonde bird. This blonde bird is going with the owner of the club. It was Turkish Mafia, bro, right? Luke, so this bird's by herself to begin with. Luke's gone and spoke to her. He's bought her a drink, yeah? She's accepted the drink in all humility. Do you know what I mean? Right, they're having a chat. As her boyfriend's arrived, this fucking Turkish Mafia dude, he's gone and sat with her. Luke has then sat there and just sharked the fuck out of him like he wants to kill him, bro. You can't fuck about like that. So I've had the bouncers come up to me, yeah? The pull, the, I knew the bouncers. I've been there loads. They, they loved me. Pulled me to one side, bro, and you know what they said to me? Listen, you need to get your mate out of the club now. We've been told to take him outside and break his legs. I went, who? They went in there. I went, he'll be out in seconds. I went up to him, grabbed him by his throat, picked him up off his feet, and fucking threw him out of the club. I had no choice, Sean. Do you know what saved I mean, right? him. You saved, saved him. him. Right, saved him. So the bouncer have gone, it's all calm now. The geezer who, who it had all instigated with even nodded at me when I walked back in as if to say, thank you for getting the dickhead out of here, yeah? yeah? Right? So I thought it was all calm and that. Bro, I'm dancing away. 45 minutes later, the bouncer have come and grabbed me. Now, they've grabbed me now, Sean. So I'm ready to fight, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? I'm thinking, yeah, you're going to break my legs. Don't fucking think so. Do you know what I mean, right? So they've grabbed me. I've turned around. I'm like, fucking what? Do you know what I mean? They've gone, nah, Danny, now nah, we need to get you out of here. We need to get you out of here now. I'm like, why? There's a taxi waiting outside, I swear to you. We're not trying to do anything. There's a taxi waiting outside, we need to get you out of the back. They've took me out of the back of the club, put me in this taxi as I've drove away. Beamers, fucking mercs, everything's just pulling up outside this fucking club, bro. All the mafia have come to kill us. So then we could not go back to Sidé for the rest of my fucking wedding. Because <laughs> we had the Turkish mafia after us, bro. <laughs> not, even, not even the baddest thing, bro. Listen to this, right? <laughs> No, nah, listen to this, right? It gets worse. No, it's fucking listen to this. It's in front of my fucking dad as well. Yeah, right? Of course, some trouble and whatever. I've got called to reception again. My missus has come with me. I've gone, Bab, come with me, man, because this shit freaks me out. Do you know what I mean, right? So my missus come with me. My dad's come with me. Yeah, right? Sat down. This geezer sat in front of me. Don't look like the manager. Some big fucking dude with a suit on. He's sat in front of me. 
This was his exact words to me, Sean. He looked at me and he went, I can tell by looking at you that you can look after yourself. He went, but you see me? He says, I'm Russian mafia and I'll have you fucking killed if your boys keep fucking about in my hotel. Bro. I was like, bro, I ain't done nothing wrong. And he went, I know you haven't done nothing wrong. That's why you're all right. He says, but I'm telling you fucking now. He says, if one more instance happens in this hotel, right, you and your boys are going to get disappeared. You'll never be seen again. Right? And I'm in a foreign country, bro, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, do you know what I mean? My wife's sat there, my dad has got up from the table, and he's fucked off, right? My mate Luke and um, Miles, yeah, right? My, my dad's fucked off now. Gone to Luke's room, yeah. Now, I was, I was basically, I was going to take Luke to the beach and give him a kick in, John. Do you know what I mean? Because this has cost me this 16 grand. This is the best time of my life, and you're going to ruin it. I've been threatened by gangsters. I can't fucking, do you know what I mean? Right? So I'm going to knock you the fuck out. So I'm speaking like this, and then basically my dad's come to my room and he's got it sorted. And I'm going, what do you mean it's sorted? So I've gone and spoke to Luke. My dad, my dad had told him straight, man, he was going to kill him. My dad had blatantly told him he was going to kill him. And then knew my dad. My dad was fucking bad. My dad went, listen, Danny's going to take you down to the beach and give you a kick in. You see me? I'll fucking kill you. Do you know what I mean? This is my son's fucking wedding. And then the lads was going to go home, but I persuaded them not to. I was like, look, just fucking behave, man. Do you know what I mean? Right, don't, this is my wedding, boys. Do you know what I mean? Fucking behave. And they did from then on and we all had a good time. Good. But we just couldn't go back to Sidae. Yeah. But it was that bad. We're walking back from Sidae before all this happened. Like, I've just after a night out in Sidae. Luke again? You fucking psychopathic lunatic twat. Do you know what I mean, right? Walking back, yeah? Now, outside hotels in Turkey on a night time, you have geese with guns. Literally. With machine guns, yeah? Luke's gone on this park outside this hotel to fucking play like a twat because he's pissed. The geezer has time to fuck off. Luke's turned around and gone, fuck you, dickhead. What are you going to do? The geezer's lifted his gun up to Luke, yeah? And Luke's like, what? What? I swear, Sean. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Can't text Mavic anywhere, mate. <laughs> you can't, Sean. You can't text Mavic anywhere, mate. Any other foreign adventure stories? I have a fucking load, Sean. Like what? I've been, well, I've been, I, I try and get myself as, f as many places as I can. I went, went on Turkey the first, we got there, come down in the morning, add my bollock in from the manager in reception, thought I need to go and chill out. There was a thunderstorm in the thing. No gas. He'll tell you this, right? My son, yeah? I'm fuck I've gone down to the beach. All the lads have come with me, yeah? Right? And there's lightning hitting the sea. Yeah? Right? Bro, I've just gone in. And I've laid in the sea with <laughs> lightning smashing the sea all around me. And I'm just going, Thor! Thor! <laughs> Thor! Do you know what I mean? The lads are going, Daddy, come in. I'm like, fuck you. I'm all right. Leave me alone. Go back to the hotel. You know what I mean? Leave me in here. If I die, I fucking die. I don't care. You know what I mean? Right? And same holiday, I took the lads because a lot of them couldn't swim. So I was teaching them how to snorkel and stuff. And do you know something, Luke? It's amazing how many fucking stories you're in, bro. So Luke again. Luke shit his pants and he start fucking turboing towards the shore. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? I've stopped him. He's like, Dan, there's something big down there. Dan, there's something big down there. Do you know what I mean? So I've gone, hold on a minute. I'm like a fucking fish, bro. Do you know what I mean? So I've just gone down. Do you know what I mean? Bro, it was a turtle that was about... The shell of it was about that big. Yeah? I've just, I've just gone, Luke, come here, look. He's put his head under there. He's like, no, nah, man, no. Nah. Do you know what I mean? I've grabbed hold of the shell, bro, and it took me out. It took you out? It took me out, yeah. Did I, it? I let go when I was about 12 metres, because I knew oh, I, I had not... felt good. Yeah, it was brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Bro, I've sat down on the bottom with an octopus wrapped around my arm. Yeah. And I've been playing with this tentacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. And you know when you play with the octopus, octopus's tentacle? Yeah. They actually stroke your back. Oh my god! Do you know what I mean? So I'm stroking his tentacle, and he's yeah. stroking my hand, and I'm stroking his tentacle, and he's mad, mad. Yeah. I took him. We went to Tenerife. I took him to Tenerife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I took Ethan to Tenerife, and it, you did love it though, didn't you? It was brilliant, bro. Mm. So you get to Tenerife, you have people live in caves like the Flintstones, bro. Yeah. yeah. But these are like Amazon women, but they're naked, bro. So I'm, I'm basically, I'm like, Bab, I've got some weed, and that, you know what I mean, I've gone onto a rock. I'm like, son, come with your dad. I'd already noticed this shit. I'm like, son, come with your dad. So we sat on this rock, bro, and I swear, out of this cave come these four fucking Amazonians, bro, butt naked, jump in the water, start swimming around, and that, yeah? yeah. I was like, that looks sick, and that. Bro, do you know what? Come out after him. The geezer come out after him, bro, with a cock about that big, right? Uh, he just uh, walked. It was like his harem of bitches, bro. It was like there was his harem. Oh my he just God. walked out. And I swear, he stood on the side. And you know, his cock was that big. It looked like a rope. I thought these wow. bitches were going to use it to climb out the fucking thing, man. Wow. It was mental. But anyway, yeah, that day we've gone around. We've gone around there. He's looked at all the naked women and that. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And then we've gone around to the beach and we went. I took him snorkeling. I went in first and I swam out and I found a barracuda nest with some barracuda protecting the young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm hovering now, and the barracuda comes straight out to my goggles like that. Yeah, teeth glared and everything, right? But I just swam backwards slowly, 
it followed me out the nest. And once I was far enough away, it just turned around and went back. Wow. I went back to the shore and went, Eve, come with me. I've got to show you something. Do you know what I mean? Now, we'd been speaking about Barracuda, but he'd never seen one at this point. He went, what does it look like? I went, imagine a streamlined pike with some big, sharp fucking teeth, bro. Do you know what I mean, right? So that's funny. <laughs> so I took him and I've swam into this nest with him, yeah? As this thing's gone like that, yeah? Bro, I just heard loads of commotion. I've looked behind me now, and he's about 100 metres away, bro. It's like something out of a cartoon. His arms are doing this. Do you know what I mean? I've swam up to him. Listen to this. I've swam to him. I've grabbed his ankle in it to stop him, to get, chill out. Do you know what I mean? As I've grabbed yeah. his ankle, he kicked me fucking in the face. Bosh! Do you know what I mean? Right? Because he thought it was the fish grabbing his fucking ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I took him that holiday as well in a fucking not allowed. Nobody. Mate, I've took him on some crazy shit, yeah? yeah. I took him in a whirlpool that humans, like, you're not, you're not allowed to go in. You're not allowed to go in there because it goes from the height of your ceiling to below your floor in a second. And it's a rock pool. So basically, it causes like a swirling sensation. Sucks you under, spins you around and spits you back out. Yeah? Oh, and there was all shit. like, you know, you call going there, you call going there. I was like, fuck that, if In... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's what me and him are like, mate. Yeah. When he was five, I took him to Snowdonia. What did it feel like in the whirlpool? Ah, oh, it was just, bro, you get sucked down, spun around, spat back out. <laughs> but we surf, so we're used to that feeling of yeah. getting wiped out by waves. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you yeah. get wiped out, you get spun like a washing machine, so we're used to it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I took him, um, took him Snowdonia when he was five years of age, Sean. And we went, and rather than, because I'm so adventurous and I just like to do things the hard way. Mate, that, that holiday, mm. right, I pitched us up on the side of the mountain. Made a big fire pit. I was serving my kids sausages off my samurai sword. That's how basically we went. <laughs> Every morning I was like, yeah, son, passing him a sausage on my samurai sword. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But we climbed at, like basically a rock face, but had trees on it. Yeah. So you had this bit here on the rock face. We didn't go up the normal walkways, bro. I'm more adventurous than that. I'm like, kids, you want to climb that? And it was like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. No ropes, no safety gear, no fuck all, bro. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I cl we climbed up the side of this mountain. And here you had some trees and some stuff you could grab hold of to get up this mountain. Here it was sheer fucking rock wall like that, but it was about a 500 meter drop. Wow. Right? So I'm basically climbing up with Ethan. Yeah, right? I've turned around to speak to Pico again. Pico was with me. I've turned around to speak to Pico. I've looked back, Sean, and he is stood on a precipice, yeah, with the wind just stood on the edge of a rock overlooking this here, bro, swaying. And he was about 20 meters from me. Do you know what I mean? I've never gone up something so fast in my fucking life. And you can imagine, we didn't make it to the top. No, Dad called it off right there. And we go straight back down. My fucking heart was in my mouth. I was like, oh my God. Do you know what I mean? I yeah, I can imagine. God. Yeah, crazy, bro. So you've got quite a collection then of weapons, bows, swords. I have a compound bow. I have an Indian war bow. I have yeah. a crossbow. I have razor tipped arrows. I have titanium tipped arrows. I have a broadsword. I have two samurai swords. I have a shield. I have throwing axes. I have a war axe. I've got war armor. I've got daggers. I've got karambit daggers. Um, yeah, I've got quite a lot. Have you, are you trained in weapons combat? All my own, yeah. All my own, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some of my videos where I'm actually using them. You have to use the channel, yeah. And you, you'll you see when you see me use them, they're like an extension of my own arm, Sean. Yeah, yeah. 20 years I've been training weapons. 20 years. Yeah. Don't use them. Never use them. Yeah. Never use them on a human target. Never. Come close a few times, but I've never actually used them. Always use these. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, mm. I've got a lot of weaponry, bro. What brought, was the moment that brought you the closest to thinking you might have to use one of them? Um, that day with that lad with that knife. Oh, the big lad. Because if he would have stopped yeah. that, I'd already decided to chop his hand off. Yeah. I've already, I'd already decided to chop his hand off. Yeah. I was going to basically, I'd already decided what I was going to do, bro. Do you know what I mean? I was literally just going to basically parry and cut his hand off at the same time. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then when his hand was on the floor, I was mm. going to pick up his knife and cut myself. Do you know what I mean? And I'd already decided to take his hand off. I'd already decided I was going to take a hand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right? So if he, he, he ran, but if he wouldn't have run, nowadays I'm of the thought now, like if somebody comes at me with a weapon, I am going to use all of my skill and all of my knowledge that I've used over the years. I'm going to chop you up. I'm not going to fuck about. Do you know what I mean? Right? So I would have cut his hand off. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any stories that we have missed out today then that you would like to tell the viewers? Mm, yeah, one funny story about my fucking brother. Go for it. <laughs> Knocking himself out of a golf flag. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me not to tell you this, but fuck it. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Simon plays golf like me, yeah? Yeah. Right? We're playing a hole. I don't know, it's took him about seven to get on the green. He's pissed, yeah? Right? He's gone to put. He's ringed out in it. 
Do you know what I mean, right? Simon's gone, fucking prick. Rah, rah, rah. Fucking rah, rah. Hit the flag of his putter. The flag's gone down like that. Come back and it hit him in the eye. Shattered his eye socket and knocked him out. They had to bring the golf Ooh. buggy onto the course to take him off on the golf buggy. But... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, what a journey you've took us on today, then. Yeah, man. Is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers in conclusion who've watched this? Young people who might may be inspired by you? Um, listen, the way I live my life is don't do to others as you do not want done to yourself. Right, if you live by that rule, you will not be far wrong, audience, right? Yeah. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, right? Always be compassionate to other people. Always try and see what they're going through from their perspective rather than you closing it out with your own perspective. Because not everybody deals with things in the same way. Somebody could be hurting, right? And you just dismiss that person and it makes the hurt worse. So rather than doing that, just be kind to everybody because you know something, in the world that we are in at the moment, the only thing that is going to get us out of all this shit is kindness and compassion. Hate and all that kind of shit is not. I know I've spoke a lot today about violence and that, but this is a podcast situa situation, yeah? It's in my past, everyone. It's in my past. I haven't hurt nobody for like, what, five years? I haven't even been in a situation like that for five years, right? That's because I now live with love and compassion. I try and talk to a person before going over that edge. Do you know what I mean? Everybody needs to try and do that. Everybody needs to try and do that. And racism, come on, man. Do you know something? The days of racism are gone. Do you know what I mean? It's simple as that. Do you know what I mean? We are all the fucking same. We are all the same. Cut my skin off. Do you know what I mean? Cut the Jamaican man's skin off. You ain't going to be able to tell the difference. Are hey, you fuck? We're human. We're all human. So start treating people like fucking humans rather than degrading them for either the religion or the colour or the choices in life. Do you know what I mean? Try and put yourself in their shoes, maybe. Just try that, maybe. And it will make you a better person. Trust me. If you think, if everybody thinks, right, that you can stay stationary in life and stay as you are and that's going to be okay, nah. Everybody has to grow. Everybody has to learn. And through that growth and that learning is what will create a better person. Trust me. Much love, everyone. <laughs> and perhaps one final time, can you show us how quickly you flip into the Danny G? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a subject. Someone's coming to your house to threaten your family. Listen, right? Listen, listen. I'm not even going to put a scenario there. I'm just going to put it to you like this, right? The fact of the matter is, if anybody does come to my house, off the YouTube channel, any trolls or whatever... I will fucking kill you. It's that simple. Yeah, I'm not joking. If you can't see it in my face, you're a fucking fool. Because I will kill you. If I do the jail, I do the fucking jail. I don't give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. I'm a Viking. I want to go to Valhalla. I want to die in battle. That is me. Yeah? So if you want the fucking battle, come on. And I will give you the battle of your fucking life. I will rip chunks out of you. I will will drink ya and I will fucking enjoy it, son. Holy shit. Got goosebumps off that one. If you want more, go over to Danny G's <laughs> channel. What a guy. What a character. What a life. Absolutely one of the best podcasts we have ever done. The energy in the room right now is off the scale. I can feel it. Huge thank you to Danny for coming on. Let us know in the comments what you thought about this today. I urge people to go and subscribe to his channel. The link will be right there in the top of the description box. Huge thank you to the new subs. Subscription logo is in the corner of the screen. And most of all, huge thank you to Danny for coming out. Give us a hug. Thank you to you, Sean. Thank you to you, Sean. We'll do it again in my first podcast, yeah. mate.